Hey, Click This fans, want to get closer to the show than ever? Join Click This TV. Click This TV offers early commercial-free access to wrestling's hottest podcast, plus live audience tapings of their show every friggin' week, and your chance to participate with Kevin and Sean in the monthly Nash and Friends Watch Along Show. Head to clickthistv.com now and get inside the show that's just too sweet. Following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. can hear us if you can see us you're one of the lucky ones because you're here for click this the kevin ash podcast he's kevin i'm sean kevin i can't help but notice right out of the gate that you have some new gear yeah actually i I went on uh i went on the uh ebay and i was able to buy janet jackson's headset from the black cat fucking uh tour Mm -hmm. Your tits popping out. I got to tell you right now. Be careful. Um, look at the size of the look at these look, look, look at the earphones. Eh? Thank God I've got the the world's smallest ears. Yeah, so. your bison ears. Um, no, I don't. My so, small. I'm, my my ears are like shark ears. Look at that. I, like my and my does ears. A, does a shark ears, have an ear? I, I'm I'm thinking about it for the first time. I'm just saying though that that's 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 the sign of a genetic warrior is if your ears don't stick out that means you're you're, you're streamlined. So I'm 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 ge- I'm genetically it'd be very hard to color flower these ears. Right. Uh, well, th- listen. Size of the headset aside, um, you um, you will be heard certainly for the entire episode. Yeah, and then I maybe and uh, hopefully so, you know, it'll it'll put an end to the. Um, me not being uh you know in and out the entire right and i every time i watch it back it's i think of myself like do they not do that thing in the school systems anymore when you go when they put the earphones on you and you oh, the, te- no, the test yeah, the test the fucking area like they don't do that anymore the people just go hey it goes in and out well he needs a pulse now walk in sit down yeah hey. You're in. Here's your. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to hear when you got your hand on the carburetor and you're fucking dragging a bong. <laughs> He's going in and out on me. But uh, you know, I'm I'm not 100 percent happy with the microphone, but I think we're gonna fix it in post. I think we're gonna end, add, add some uh, add some bass to it. But uh, if not, you're getting another one in the mail. <laughs> you're getting what's flare? We got to get flares. We got to find out what one he has. Listen, I if I sound a little. <laughs> <clears throat> verklempt today i've been basically inhaling straight carbon dioxide carbon monoxide. what comes off the fire when something's burning the bad carbon it's fucking soot <laughs> yeah because apparently the entire the entire northeast is, is in, under a, a blanket of smoke and death courtesy of the wildfires in ontario Oh, it's so, just so here, here's one for you. you you're you're going to love this. So I heard the number is around 450 fires are going on right now in, 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 in uh, Canada. Yes, that's correct. And the, uh, the aid for uh, the, the, Aid for Biden got on the news tonight, and she was just informed us all that we had sent six hundred firefighters. So, like one point one per fire. We so we're we, done. We, yeah, so it's done. We, it's, like, it's over. Yeah. yeah. Come on, how about that? I mean, this is my problem with fucking everything. Okay, I'm all for backing the ukraines because I, I don't believe in anybody attacking a sovereign nation um 
but at the same sense, like when it affects fucking the United States taxpayers, can you maybe get fucking on that a little bit besides sending, you know, 600? Oh, and a couple yeah. of tankers and a couple of fucking helicopters that drop water. As as New York is in a, it's got the worst air quality in, in the world. Yeah, if you, if you haven't seen any, anybody who hasn't been watching the news. Or I mean, the, granted, you know, there's the only, what, channel. 29 million people that live in the metropolitan area there? It's not like you're really fucking doing any damage to, to, to a number, you know? <laughs> Yeah, our the numbers are staggering. Like we we uh we've out out passed, we've surpassed uh cities and countries with terrible Delhi. terrible air quality. New Delhi? Yeah, I, yeah, India. Like, yeah, India and China we, you you guys have like tripled their numbers today. Yeah. We're kicking Shanghai's ass today. Fuck yes. Um d- it almost looks I like the at- like, looks like fucking the entire northeast is being shot on a red. It is, yeah. That's like like a, a they uh, got that hue, a, a Tiffin eighty five A filter. There you go, Wesley, <laughs> uh, on the camera. Back when you used to have to actually film things. Uh, do you have that, Steve? Do you have a picture? I was in a building. I looked out the window at I don't know midday, and the, if you could see, zoom in. That's the color. That's a tree outside the window. That was the color of the world outside that door. If you if you back that up. And told me that that was a painting. It's it's a you fucking. It'd be on your wall. At at, at the fucking at, at at the modern in New York City. I'd be like, wow, I never really see who is who is that. It's the it's the coastal <laughs> Bulgarian um, Cypress. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was it was horrendous. It's I, I was wow, like, why go out? I, uh, well, there was, a, there was on the news again. I hate to you know make reference to the news, but I was trying to catch a little. Little tidbit before I got down here, so I'd have some 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 very fresh things to talk about. There was a a, a woman. She teaches uh, piano lessons, and she was doing it by uh, online today, like zooming, because uh, she came to the conclusion that it might not be good for her to be out in this in Manhattan, mm-hmm. and the fact she was like six months pregnant. I'm like, wow, I'm back. Hope she. I hope hope that wasn't a long pondering. <laughs> no, I think I think that it was an easy decision because literally when you, I couldn't smell the effects of it in in the build any building I was in today. But as soon as I stepped outside, holy Moses! I yeah. felt as if uh, I felt like I was in Cosworth Series lung. And well, um, the, the um. When I I bought down here in ninety, I closed in ninety six. In ninety seven, they had some horrendous wildfires to the point where you know where Nova Road is in this area, right? You got to like, landmark me by uh, name. I, I won't. Okay, um, you know where Forty is, which is Granada, which goes like into or- Orm- Ormond Beach. Yes. You, you, okay, I so, get that off of uh, ninety five. Yeah. So yeah. So you you can. They basically were they were fighting on the other side of the, of the interstate, and they they made it. A, a, they were about to make a call that they were going to pull out to where they where they were and make the line the fire line Nova Road, which is basically half of Ormond would have been on fire. Wow! When was some, this? Ninety seven. Wow. And when I so I came down here, I, I don't remember if that if Conan came with me that time, but um, when uh, I think Conan, yeah, I know, yeah, Conan was with me because we went out because there, you know, there back then there was like ten strip ju- strip clubs here, and there was a self a stealth club and a Baja Beach club, and there was all kind of places to go out. So we were doing uh, TVs in Orlando, and there was no, you know, it wasn't any. Uh, air quality problems in Orlando, and I said, "Man, I said, let's just pop over. We'll stay in my condo, and we'll just, you know, hang out in, in Daytona for a couple of days because we were off." So me and Conan drove over, and as we got over here, it was just like, "Holy fuck!" And as we went over, like, in the, in the, in the, this area's doubled in size in, te- in like the last ten years. 
Back then, I bet your Metropolitan and Daytona Beach was maybe 170. Now it's like 600,000. And, um, but when we got here, I parked underneath the building, so we still hadn't been out. And then when we got out of the elevator, it's open to, to, to walk to your unit. And just that fucking, I don't know, was it maybe 20 feet from the elevator to my unit was like, it was, un- it was unbelievable. Yeah. Like we were hacking and. So it was what? Just brush? That was. Uh... It was just, I guess it one they, they did, um, an archaeologist at one point did some kind of finding and said that at some point in the history of Florida before it was, you know, populated, that there was a, there was a, a wildfire that basically went from Orlando to Tallahassee, like burnt the whole, you know. Wow. But good, good luck getting a drought down in this bitch now. Yeah, no, that's your. I mean, it's you're getting like, steady rain. We got we oh we got rain. Um, we got rain this morning. Got rain 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 again this afternoon. Yesterday was I mean was chamber chamber of commerce weather yesterday. But I think we've got um, thunder thunderstorms like all all week. Well, hurricane season lasts till what? It's like. It's like well, November, I mean, right? It like used you're... to be, but I mean, we've we've had name storm, you know, we've had name storms in January, like several several seasons in a row. Because wow. the water stays, you know, the water gets warm, so the water really never gets cold, right. you know. So it's just like it's like the the, the Gulf's already in the eighties, and there's there's two um, systems. That are they're, they're, they've got their eye on right now, and I I put it on the Weather Channel today to to see if I can get a tropical update, and they're so busy co- covering the, the the fire situation and smoke situation, and, and being yeah, you know, and they they should because it's like that's where the, I, there's a, a absolute hazard to people's health when the air quality is 457. Yeah, you know, you know and you know it's funny the. Uh, all I could think about today is the importance of global agreement with pollution standards and with, well, if you want to drill down and do the root cause, which of course no one wants to do, you could talk about climate, but um, at least pollution, this fucking fire's in Ontario. Feel free to bring up a map, anyone. You don't have to, Steve, but Shit, I'm in New Jersey Nova choking. Too. Yeah. So the... If you look at the, there's like satellite imagery of the intensity of it. How much of the fucking continent of North America is being eaten up by this? What your neighbors do with the air counts. Now, this is an accident, obviously, so this is not a one-to-one. But just think about this. If this were another Chernobyl-type situation, we need global agreement and global cooperation. And global standards on this stuff, of course, we'll never do it with many of the nations, but with our more civilized no, friends, just, just we with, can get with, together. With the pollution that China and India put out alone, we could we could have a zero carbon footprint here, and it wouldn't make. I looked up today. I was because somebody had told me. Did you learn that from Herschel Walker, by the way? Yes, I did. Yeah, Herschel okay. Walker told me that they, they they take our good air and give us the bad air. Mm-hmm. But um, Antarctica uh, melts at 150 billion tons a year. That ice. Wow. I think you think that might be? I don't know. A centimeter of, of anything. A, a, a centimeter of fucking ocean rise, or <clears throat> yeah. But yeah. well, maybe everyone will learn from this. Maybe everyone's sitting in New York pondering. Pondering such issues will learn from the, probably well, not. You know, it's a, it's a, yeah. Put, put Detroit at Philadelphia, so that's I'm okay as long as it's not Philadelphia at Detroit. So, yeah. Well, feedback from well, well, let's welcome our live audience, our members of the uh, Click This TV, Click Woo-hoo! This TV members. Thank you for coming and thank you, subscribing and, thank you for, and yes, thank you for uh, subscribing. 
we'll have something uh, exciting to tell you guys about. Two fifty-five in Philly. Two fifty-five. <laughs> That's brutal. Can you look up Detroit? I want to think that um, isn't one forty-five. Isn't that when it starts to be the shits? It's yeah, that's when it, it crosses out of orange and into red. Um, so I've been watching the needle hoping it goes in the other direction. It doesn't seem that's gonna happen. Yet. I was hoping overnight something would happen. It doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But I uh, just bring up Detroit when you uh, when you get the number there. Detroit uh, is it eighty three? Okay. So I think Kev, I think you'll be okay. Right, but it's it's moving. It's moving that way. Oh, it's increasing. It looked like, what was it, 80 a couple of hours ago? It yeah. looked like. We're tracking the air quality numbers. Yeah, it was 80. Uh, oh, these are different areas of Del Rey. I don't know. Fuck it. Yeah, air quality. Yeah, so I guess, all right, but in the 80s. Not bad for now. Yeah. We got to see which way the wind goes over the next couple of days, though. But Detroit had because also in like Gaylord, Michigan, which is like is kind of in the middle of the mitten. Um, there's wildfires uh, up there, so there's also wildfires in actual Michigan itself. Yeah, they mustn't be getting rain there either. No, some in they haven't. They, 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 it, it's they haven't got rain in fucking forever. We're supposed to go to the Tiger game on, uh, my wife and I are going to fly up and go to the Tiger game on Sunday. We'll fly up Saturday night and we're supposed to, and they're actually forecasting rain for for Sunday, the, 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 the day I'm going to the game. Well, much needed. If it's going to rain anyway, make it make it unload a fucking well, let seven it, inches. Let, of let's it. let's let's get the game in first. And let 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 it fucking pour on Taylor Swift, who's following the Tigers. Well, at the stadium? Yeah, fucking. So my my we 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 you know my sister uh, my sister in law got the, the the box. So we got the you know the, the big Tiger, you know private box. Is this so, the Little Caesars box, Kevin? Yeah, this is the you Little Caesars box. It's the box. Little Caesars box. That's it's weird, though. Of all the boxes, this is the only one that's round. It's, it's crazy. They won't even fucking they won't even fucking make their sweet square. So uh so we 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 got that going for us, but the game starts at eleven thirty on Sunday because there's a pride uh parade. And there's Taylor Swift at like that night at Tiger Stadium. So I guess it's called Commercial Park. I don't know what it's called now. I, it's gonna. It's always gonna be Tiger Stadium to me. So right, right. So same day they're gonna. Uh, yeah, they're gonna get it all flip, cleaned up. And, and I guess she's gonna come in. I guess she does two two nights in Detroit. But for damn it, for Pride Week she better. Uh so. But she just some she just some other guy dumped like they they got she broke up with some other guy she was just with a short period she can't keep a guy to save her life. See, when I think of Taylor Swift, I was just saying this to my wife. We were driving to uh, we were going to dinner a couple of weeks ago, and she was playing MetLife Stadium, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I said, "We're going to get nailed." I had to kind of pass through that area, East Rutherford, to get to. The restaurant, and I, I said, oh, we're gonna get crushed here by all these, like you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be like a Clearasil ad for, uh, you know, for pimples. But I'm like, wait a minute, how old is she now? Like, I, I forever have in my head that you know that there's 13 year old girls following her on the country, but it's like she's probably what 30, 28. So it's like Madonna when we were kids. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and I, that's what I when when my wife and I we were having the conversation about why she couldn't. She's 33. Dom said. Um, yeah, see, wh when we had the conversation, I remember during the, uh, watching the Madonna documentary and she was, remember she was, uh, w she was dating Warren Beatty at the time and yes. Warren, Warren Beatty came in and, you know, he said, you know, are we on? She said, yeah. He goes, are, are you ever off? That's you know, right. I, I do was, remember that. Yeah. And it was, but it's a situation of. Man, you got to be pretty secure with yourself to 
have somebody that basically had congressional, you know, inquiries over the fact that Ticketmasters was fucking up because you were, you know, shutting down the systems because you're so, I mean, you know, the only thing that stops her is how many dates she works and what the building holds. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's her, that's the only thing that's, I'm amazed that they didn't have her at Ford Field. You know, what because it's a difference in capacity. Well, fuck yeah, it's it's the Lions Stadium. Yeah. Oh, versus uh, an well, Tiger Stadium most, is huge. Most, most, no, but most baseball fields hold forty five thousand. Oh right, because it's only it's a three quarter thing. Your bleachers, but I, but don't I guess hold you much, got. Right? I mean, you got the. I guess you got you know, the the turf. Mm -hmm. You know, can you keep the box for the Taylor Swift show? Not even a, 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 you couldn't get me to sit through that at, at gunpoint. Did I tell you the last? Sorry, the, the, but my buddies. Uh, oh wait, that, she's playing Ford Field. Look, she's playing Ford Field in on June. June when is June ninth? Two days. Okay, so then she's and the tenth. So she's at Ford Field. So maybe they're just getting us out of Tiger Stadium, so they can have. The parking for that that they don't they don't yeah they can't run two back they, they you can't run a Tigers game and and a sold out fucking Taylor Swift. She, what, how many dates are these? Three consecutive when, nights. When we get at a Ford Field, it, are, do we have our? Uh... Oh, there it is. I see. Yeah, that's why. That's why yes, you gotta right. get out of there. Fuck is right next to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's. That's what's one thing about that's great about Detroit is, I mean, the football field, the baseball stadium, and then the Le Little Caesar Dome, which which has the Red Wings, and the uh, the Pistons is all. I mean, they're all right in that area. So you can watch all your teams lose every year, uh, all right in the same proximity. I mean, I think the fucking Lions did okay. Lions, you know what? Lions did good for me with DraftKings. Is what the Lions did this year. Yeah, well, they, I've they, I, uh, what, 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 what would you rather have a, 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 a Super Bowl winning team or somebody that covered seventeen fucking times? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ooh, nine points taking Detroit. <laughs> Buck, yeah. Feedback from last week. Brandon O'Hendy says you cannot compare the ratings. Uh, for the finale of a show in the 70s versus 2023. There were like four channels in the 70s. Ha ha. MASH's finale had 105 million viewers. Yeah, that was kind of our point. I mean, we know it's not uh, apples to apples, but we were saying just think of the sheer number of people whose eyeballs landed on out of the Cheers finale. The, if your statistic is correct, 105 million people watched Hawkeye sign off. I mean, that's staggering. As compared to, I mean, you hope you get what eight million? That was the number we were throwing around for. It was eight point. Yeah, it was almost almost nine. Yeah, remarkable. February nineteen eighty three. That was, by the way, the finale of May. I never got into May. Eighty one was eighty one was the who shot Jr. That we were talking about, and and, and somebody left a comment saying, uh, "You guys know that there weren't cigarette ads back then." Can you fucking believe that? I remember seeing that, and I, I say to back, myself. I Okay, by nine years, it wasn't that. Like, oh, was it only that I didn't? It was, know. It was, was it nine, nine years. years. It was eighty. I think they 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 stopped the the uh, cigarettes in seventy one or seventy two. They stopped cigarette ads, and that I think that think that Jer thing. I, I looked at that because I looked it up. And I thought, you know what? We it wasn't like we were trying to be. It was correct. a joke. Yeah, but I mean. I think it's just the fact that we're we're both so condescending and pricks that you know it's just it's never taken. Which so. leads me to Dave Winfrey, who uh, would like to let you know that uh, God, Kevin is such a prick. It comes out more and more every week. I and recall then, that comment. On, you on do our... because there's one reply <laughs> under it. From What's Kevin it, what Nash. Is it, what does it say? Could you read it for me? <sighs> if I have to. Yeah, please. It says, death will do that to a father. Yeah, imagine that. 
Imagine that. Imagine fucking I, 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 I'm a little sour on, on life right now. Wow. You know, the, great, I'm, the I'm, greatest I'm, thing about it? I'm sorry. I should just fucking kick out. I think I'm doing a pretty good fucking job. But you know what? If, you're, like, if I'm such a prick, do me a favor. Fuck yourself. Don't listen. Nobody's He's begging you to listen. I was gonna, He's a subscriber unsubscribe. for 10 months. Unsubscribe, he, motherfucker. Now, Dave. Dave. What's his name? Uh, Dave Winfrey. Yeah, Dave Winfrey. If I'm, you know what? You, you don't even know prick. So, Dave Winfrey, if you stay on here subscribing, I'm going to fucking call you out every fucking week and say, hey, Dave, it's your favorite prick. Are you watching today? Are you listening, Dave? It's your favorite prick. Uh, maybe he meant it as a compliment. I don't think so. I think that he fucking just, right now he's so happy. He's so, he's like over. He just had his fucking seven seconds. I'm going to add him to the read at the at the close of the show in the credits. Okay. You know, go through everybody's name. I'm going to Prick add, Meter, uh, Prick Meter Dave, whatever his name is. Head Prick. Yeah. Head Prick. Head Prick head, Sensor. Head, yeah, Prick Sensor. Uh, Twerk Out says T had it right with the Sopranos. The creator said that Tony was shot. I know David Chase many years later said that uh that if you would have brought what? that up well, to T, if you, if you, when you brought it, when I brought every time I said, well, yeah, and he goes, Dad, the fucking guy that created the show, he said that's what it is, that's what it is. It's like, I don't give a fuck that you're a Soprano fan, that you like Tony, you don't want him to take one in the back of the head, but that's what happened. I'm just like, all right, <laughs> fuck it. He's dead. I, you know? But somebody is, is pointed out the, the person that pointed out on that was like there was like six people in that shot that wanted him dead, and the members only jacket was was important. I'm thinking, do I have to watch that like back again? Because I don't remember there being six specific people in there that you know. I didn't realize it was the the the, the, the finale of uh, Sopranos was based on Clue. But, Colonel Mustard, I saw in the uh, at yeah, the counter with at the Holston's. silencer and the, and the members only jacket. If anyone in the area here wants to uh, have the Tony Soprano experience, it's Holston's is the name of the diner in uh, Bloomfield, and it's v like nobody cares anymore. Like I went in there and, and I I looked and I, f I saw the table. No one was at it. They don't even have like a little plaque or anything. Nobody cares. It it, it, it didn't become a thing. So you can go and you can sit at Tony's table. It's the last one. Well, or you can send around. me your address and I'll come over and beat the fuck out of you with a baseball bat. That's the that's a different Tony Soprano fucking uh That was episode forty seven. Yeah. Um I don't know though, after that after the thing in Ocala where the woman smashed the uh the kid's iPad and the, the mom went 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 next door and knocked on the door and the woman shot her through the fucking door, killed her. Well, there'll be plenty, of, plenty more of that come uh, July first, right? Little, uh, and, 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 but it, the thing is, is like it took, it, like finally they um, arrested the lady today. Like, what were they waiting on? I didn't like, hear the story. I, I mean, right I know it's Ocala, but I mean, see, I'm, I'm going to take issue with this Browns thing. First of all, David Chase can say anything he wants. Tristan Nash can say anything he wants. All that exists in the world. Is Tony sitting at the table and the screen going to black? Salvador Dali can talk about the clocks all he wants. It's my interpretation when I hang it on the wall. And it's our interpretation at the end of The Sopranos. All that exists is a black screen. That's all that's real. The money, the miles, and the black screen is all that's real. And also, if you know anything about that lifestyle, wouldn't happen with his family at the table. Nope. What happened? No. So, uh, Sasquatch says, oh, yes, please get Kevin Sullivan. I love hearing his perspective on wrestling and everywhere he wrestled and everything he has done. Another man who is a breeze and a joy and easy to listen to for long periods. He's such a nice guy. I mean, he's one of, I mean, he's one of my favorite people on the planet by far. Yeah. I would love to make it like a, cross-country trip 
and have there be lipstick cameras in the, in the car and just smoke a couple dubs and drive and mm-hmm. just chat. Some of my, uh, I, 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 I also similarly uh, enjoy Sullivan, and I do reference him when people talk about people who, you know, I chose to be friendly with in the business. There are a handful that you could sit with and have an intelligent discussion about anything, anything other than wrestling, which is usually what I prefer to talk about when I wasn't on camera talking to a wrestler. Um, but you see, you guys are used to this one element that as an outsider, I never considered myself in the wrestling business that wasn't used to. I, I was up in, I was at his hotel room. I don't remember who he was rooming with at the time. And we, it was in between shoots or something. And he's, he worked that night in the, in the ring. This is like after his retirement, a later run. And he's washing his gear in the sink. And I, maybe a common thing for you guys, get some detergent, do a little, a little wash in the sink. Wool light. And uh, okay. Right. But if you don't have wool lights, just use the shampoo. Okay, good. And a tip for everyone. You so, would not believe a a pristine singlet that you put on your body and you uh-huh. go out there and you roll around in the ring and you get sweaty, I mean, sopping wet underneath those lights, and you go back to your hotel room and you put some shampoo and hot water in the sink and you start agitating with your hands and all of a sudden that water turns like, Looks like somebody's spittoon, right? Because the the mat is absolutely oh, filthy. It's, it's fucking yeah. filthy. Yeah, I don't know how you I, guys didn't get like um, staph infections every other week from the I mats. Because they, well, that's why. <clears throat> that's why. Excuse me. Most of us um, wore elbow pads and stuff like that, just to you know, you didn't scuff up. Yeah. You know. Well, those that didn't, like the Argentina Rockers in the world. I don't know. I don't know how they weren't constantly. So anyway, Sullivan's standing there in the sink, in his fucking jock, and he's and we're having a conversation. It's just it's it's a it's an unnatural way to talk to somebody in their jock while they're washing this stuff in the sink. And I remember the NWO comes up, and he's and he say I was probably talking to whoever was in the bedroom area of the room, and he starts yelling. He goes, "You know who? You know who made that? What it was?" X Pack. He starts yelling. I say what? He's standing. He comes out with his fucking in his jock. He's like, X Pack was a big part of that, and doesn't get the credit. I said, all right, I'm, I'm, I've, I've done all I can here, and I left. But that's one of those things that just. And that's true, man. He doesn't. It, Sean doesn't get the credit he he should. He Agreed. Should get. Agreed. It sure is funny how the only thing that changed. In, in those 83 weeks, is x Pot going to fucking WWE. Interesting. There were, there, there were no other fucking major. Brett, Brett joined us. You yeah. Know, we got Brett, and they got x Pot, and they, they won, so. Get rid of your credit card debt, get a lower monthly payment, and skip your next two house payments at SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to save thousands with SaveWithConrad.com. Find out how much money you can save right now at SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, Sasquatch also says, uh, I'm writing something. I was writing something nice about Sean, and I accidentally wrote Sean Mooney. Accidental shout out to Sean Mooney. I always loved the way Sean conducted a shoot. What a what fun to listen to when you enjoy the host and the wrestler. Sean's voice is like comfort food. Pleasant, gentle, funny. It's cool Sean is on here. I always thought he would be perfect for a podcast like this. And with Kevin, perfect. I'm actually not surprised at all. Keep it up, Sean Oliver. Many more years of listening to you. I had to give myself a rub. Thank you so much. The Sean Mooney reference, really the reason I put it in, is because Shiki Baby said it on that clip a couple of weeks ago when he, when I showed his, uh, his camel clutch erection. Uh, please go back and watch that in, in honor of his passing today. Uh, Chester Copperpot. The interaction was generally quite awkward and flat in this show. Sean seemed a bit off throughout. Normally it's quite fun. Even if I find certain topics boring, I guess we all have our off days. So a, a belated apology for last week's show. I thought it I thought it was I thought it was great. I'm not offended. 
I'm not get upset. I'm not going to scream into the microphone or anything, but uh, I apologize if I was off Chester Copperpot. I think this week I'm, I'm, I'm very much on. It's the bronchitis from the smoke inhalation. Everyone's a critic out there, Kevin. Everyone is. But we get, we, we put ourselves well, out I mean, it's, we it's like they think we, it's, it's like they think we come, we come here with, you know, a teleprompter and it's like, we just, we're, we're just, just us. Spit, we just spitball it. And it's like, I've been irritable. My, you know, my wife was gone for two weeks. I was in a home, a home alone with a, a uh, 12 pound dog that refuses to take it outside for four hours. And as soon as you bring it in, it shits and pisses, you know, it's just like, fuck, I, I, I haven't cleaned up more shit and piss. And since I was taking, you know, changing diapers on my son, I was like, fuck, it was just, it, it cracked me. It absolutely. And then on top of that, you know, I had to cook every meal and I eat five times a day. You can't mm -hmm. you can't eat restaurant food and stay lean. It's the sodium alone will fucking kill you. So it's like true that. Yeah. So I mean, it was like, oof. It's not like I'm you know, Bourdain <laughs> at the, in, in the kitchen. But um, you did uh, you did hit the Des Moines though, right? I did. We had yeah. Me and me and uh, Sean Wallman did the. Uh, the Des Moines Comic Con this past weekend. Who'd you hang <clears> with? <throat> who who was out there? Talent was, I mean, I think that not much. Um, the biggest, I think, the biggest name was the guy that um, voices SpongeBob. Like he was like, you know, is that a shoot? The the guy that SpongeBob yeah, was at no, the convention. Dude, wow. dude I, I, it, it, when you go to these conventions nowadays, it's the it's the voice people are as over if not more so than the actors from from film and television interesting it's just like you know and i i mean to me it's just like to stand in a line a hundred deep to get a picture taken of a person that you never see during an episode like it's the it's the voice of Johnny Bravo, and you're sitting there and you get a picture and you, and you show the picture to your somebody else. They go, "Who's that?" Oh, that's the guy that does the voice of Johnny Bravo. Is it really? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Like, how would you know? Like how would now, you know? now, now, what I got to do is now I got to fucking get an IMDb Pro and and look him up and see if they got you know he's got his photo in there and. I, I have a funny story like that. I, I did a uh, an anime series, the American, the English translation from the Japanese anime. It was called A Record of Lotus War. And the, and the series, the sub-series was called like uh, Chronicle of the Heroic Knight or something like that. But it wasn't, it wasn't a SAG gig. So I had to go by it. it so you might, you might see a name like Oliver Gregory. Uh, credited for having played Orson the Berserker in Record of Lotos War. So like years later, Kev, I'm online and I see like all these, like the anime geeks, I say that with love, like putting over the performance of this guy, Oliver Gregory, who did the one series and then nothing else as Orson, as having brought such dimension to Orson the Berserker who would have been probably a very flat one-dimensional cardboard character had Oliver Gregory not voiced him with such care. And I'm like, fuck, I can never cash in on this and do these conventions because I scabbed the fucking gig. There's no, It's me. There's no Oliver Gregory. I can never, ever admit to having done it and sit at one of these fucking comic cons and make a mint because I was Oliver Gregory and I did a bad thing. Well... I mean, what what with SAG with SAG, SAG going to do now? Not probably nothing now. They're, they're, we're ready to walk Besides the line be, next to the writers. Yeah, exactly. We we can get in line, run run a shift with a fucking. So, I think it's you know it's this this. Uh, oh yeah, here's some hot news. It's Wednesday, and mm -hmm. Mike Pence threw his hat into the presidential ring. Chris Christie so, as well. I mean, but my, my I, I watched 
Pence do his speech today, and it's just like you can. It's I didn't know because I did until you see it. It's like oh wow, like really shitty AI. You can you can pick out the robots. Like, oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, Pence is really that's a really shitty programmed fucking robot. That guy. Yeah. What about the actors that were hired? We learned about this a few weeks ago too. The guy, like, do you I, think it's do you think it's AI or do you think it's a, just an actor? Well, I, this is my whole thing. Like, so they killed Biden. You know, I mean, everybody. I mean, there's. I don't think that's question that they killed Biden. We we broke but that. So on this, uh, so they, they had to get an actor. Does would he get a stunt adjustment for that fucking tumble? At the uh, oh the fall. Air Academy, yeah. it was probably a union stunt man would have to do that. So would be, that would, so that's why we really don't get that good of a look of them because it's they face is different, yeah, it, right? Face is different because it's a, it's the stunt Biden, mm-hmm. not the actor Biden that's taking over the assassinated Biden, right? We learned so all does Biden weeks still get crazy. credit for for putting together that? Uh, the well, the funny ceiling? thing is, it's it's something that's inconsistent, and these people are usually not riddled with inconsistencies, so it's frustrating to me. If they're actors, why is anyone pursuing the Hunter Biden and Biden family investigation? Um, those that feel they're actors are also, uh, I think, always talking about this investigation and, and very much in favor of it. But if they're actors, how does that work? Well, I guess you'd have to somehow get a script to Biden to be able to answer anything with any kind of coherence because, you know, I I doubt anybody knows what Joe Biden uh, thinks of on a day-to-day basis, so. So the, yeah, I mean, maybe the, maybe the, the investigation is also a work. Everything's a work. I don't know. I tell you right now, it's just like I, I'm so surprised. If I had all the motherfuckers with their scopes on me that that Trump does right now, I mean, it looks like uh, who they pull in yesterday. They pulled in his uh, chief of staff, and it's like if he's saying on that January the 6th gimmick, if he's saying on that because that he didn't, you know, he gave, I think he gave some text messages when they did the, mm-hmm. you know, just the, but I, you know, he didn't, he didn't come out and say anything to the, to the committee. So if, but he's the one that, you know, he's, he's the one that can, would, can actually do uh, Trump damage. So. They're all seemingly, and of course they have to go after him because he's the front runner. But they're, they, do you think they could easily clip him off like a like a mole on the on the Republican Party? Do you think they'll successfully be able to remove him Trump? from serious nomination consideration? Yeah, no, altogether I, as a concern. I, I think I think Trump will have a fucking ankle bracelet on to be debating. He's that entrenched. I I don't. I, I, you might be surprised by that. My whole thing is this: name another person that in that poor of health, that's seventy-seven years old, that has this much scrutiny on a daily basis, with so much like anybody that's been sued in their life. That alone is 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 so it takes up so much real estate in your brain. Mm. Let alone having like. Five or six federal cases with you saying, "Hey, can you find eleven thousand votes for me in Georgia?" <laughs> votes, I mean, yeah. it's it's not like it's just. I mean, you can you can call it a witch hunt. You can call it whatever the fuck you want to, but I mean, I'm the I'm the old school of there's smoke, there's usually fire, mm-hmm. and but then I say at the same time, there's no like people are like you know they're gonna put he's gonna go he's gonna go away. I'm like go where. He has to, he's a, he's a former president. He doesn't lose. I mean, it's not banished. It's not like when Hogan got in trouble and he got thrown out of the hall of fame. It's not like that. It's like, he's still an ex president. He's still the 45th president 
and he still gets as part of his deal a Secret Service uh, entourage. So the only thing that's going to happen is he's going to go to Mar-a-Lago with an angle bracelet, and he won't be able to leave the grounds, all 20 acres. No, no, there's no, there's no precedent for it. I, I don't know. I guess they could do they could The do only one that anything. I could think of would be uh, Escobar. Oh, Pablo? They, they, they built him his own prison. They put him in his own prison, and they, they – you you saw the, the 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 television show, right? They used to bring truck truckloads of lobsters and hookers, and I mean they just partied in this. But that was like they after they you know I don't even know they made it a year, but they busted out of that place. They were like, nah, this ain't this ain't working. So, That's, you know, uh, we I jokingly said everything's a work before half jokingly, but it's something that we've been talking about over the last few weeks uh, is the, you know, the CM Punk announcement or the CM Punk, is he coming to collision or not? And I saw a headline from a, I guess a respected wrestling news site, one of their um, uh, podcast episodes. Is this the one from Elser's? We, yes, <laughs> was titled um, to, to well, something to the effect. Credit of, where credits do. Yeah, well, he said that uh, the revelation was that uh, CM Punk not drawing outside of Chicago or unable to sell out outside of Chicago, and I, I didn't feel that this was much of a news flash, but hung a lot of responsibility for the ticket sales on Punk. And then we got to talking about it, and you sent me, and I'm going to, I guess we could bring it up and credit Pat McAfee. Yeah, um, I, 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 saw, I saw this on maybe Instagram. And uh, did you, uh, what did you, uh, you texted it to me, right? Yeah. But McAfee has, shows video taken from, like, the audience, from someone sitting across from yeah, the hard the, camp. Yeah, the picture of, of uh, Orange Cassidy holding the belt the photograph that when yeah, you get to so. that like you talking about an empty building right we're going to show this to everybody who's who's watching right now bring it up but so like this is this has been this has been the case for a little bit now with with AEW and and tickets yeah, and, and now they they're kind of throwing they Punk throw, under the bus a yeah, little they throw bit. Throw Phil under the bus like he oh he can't draw and it's just like it's not like he's costing you ticket sales. And the thing is, is it, it's like they the, it should be that Punk not drawing in his in his hometown Chicago should have been what the you know, and it's like. That's a big ass arena, a United Center. United and I was, Center. And, and, we, and we had this discussion. Here, here we go. Here's the clip. So that look, look behind. Well, wait to stop it when they hit when they hit the picture. Hit that. Stop it. But can we pull that picture up of of Orange Cassidy? That wasn't uh, that wasn't when the catering line was going on when they were shooting promos. That was during the Can show. Can we make I that assume. larger, Steve? The we photograph. To zoom? Cameraman, hit the zoom. Cameraman, zoom. Uh, I can't believe it. I fucking ate your bronies on that side. I mean, take 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 away what's at ringside, and there's like what. I one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve three four five six seven. So the fact that you're able to count is two three four five six seven eight nine. I'll say there's sixty, maybe sixty five people in that photograph besides the the cat with the belt. Is there a chance this was an empty arena match, a la Memphis, nineteen eighty four? What What do you mean, Wesley? Was hard camera. It was opposite the hard cam, or this, this is was opposite the... hard camera. The hard camera, 
The heart that, that should that, there should be a camera somewhere right. in this. Yeah, you can see it. It's directly under the belt. If you look at the corner yeah, of where the belt is, yeah, right under that's a, yeah, the camera. That's a hard camera. That's so they never, move every. The gimmick is move everybody to the move other side. The other but, side. <clears throat> and so now, so, so so based on this history, you you run the headline that CM Punk can't turn this around. That's look at, a lot look, of Steve, Steve's Steve's comment was it was the first match. Easy, Mark boy. <laughs> Easy. A, Tony Khan's attorney is in here. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I'm not saying they didn't undersell that event. I am saying there were more people sitting there later in was the evening. Was there a misprint on yeah, the they ticket? Got, they, like they, at the, they, the, they, got, the they got tired of sitting next to somebody on the hard <laughs> camera, on the fucking hard camera side. They said, fuck it, man. I'm going to go sit over there where there's nobody could fucking walk right up and piss and get a beer. I mean, a, a three o'clock doors is pretty early. Dude, you, can, you can't to, keep giving them. Come on, man. I'm no, I'm once I was there a year ago where it was punk and it was a million dollar house. And obviously this isn't that I'm but still this saying, this, I'm still saying this, they isn't, pu- this they, isn't, is this punks? This is punk's deal is the 17th, isn't it? Well, I mean, they're running the house shows. They got this thing well oiled. I heard that Tupelo house show was 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 not since Elvis. I just think to hang this responsibility when that's the fucking arena. Listen, if you're talking about an additional three or four thousand in an eighteen thousand seat building, that's one thing. But you're going to hang the responsibility to correct that on one I'm, dude, I'm one guy. One That's guy. a lot, man. It certainly got them a lot of. It got a, it got them a lot of ink. It got them a lot of coverage. It got the, it did. You know, the whole punk thing worked for them, but th- that picture is a little. But tough it to, didn't. I it, it worked on some people. I it, it never one t- for one moment did I think he wasn't going to show up. Well, listen, people are going to watch that show, but I don't care about that show. I want five weeks after that show. I want what that rating is. Of course, it's not anyone could pop something. And it, what is that going to be? A Saturday night show, right? It is a Saturday night show. And they're running what time? Eight. Eight to what? Nine? Or eight to no, 10? it's two hours. Eight to ten. But uh, but everybody streams now anyway, so they they'll add the streaming numbers into the live. Uh, I, I think viewing. it might do well. It, well, it's summertime though. Six oh five Eastern, Steve. Are you sure? Are they just trying to? Is it on TBS? Yes. Uh, T, uh, TNT, right? Why Why would, that's the old, remember the old Turner was everything? Fucking was it 05? Yeah, that was that was the Ted Turner gimmick. It started five yeah. minutes later and it'll be, yeah. it'll be on when everybody else's isn't. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, 8 p.m. There we go. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. So I just want to give you guys a warning, man. I mean, there's some heavy, heavy lightning coming off the ocean right now. Can you guys hear that at all? No. Whew. You're sitting near. You're sitting next to the window. This might become uh, no, a I very mean, historic I, show. No, I've got the uh, I've got the hurricane shutter down. No, you do. Okay. Um. So uh, another development. We've been talking basketball all uh, the last few weeks, and uh, consistently shitting on Miami's chances uh, in the finals, and you know they get laid out completely uh, in the uh, finals opener, and then game two, seemingly out of nowhere, D- it's, down, it's a game. Yeah, but they're down fifteen. Exactly, they're down fifteen, and and, and, and I was talking to my sister last night, and. She was a hooper. She played college ball, and uh, her favorite. Her, she's like me. You know, she loves the. She loves NBA. So, I said to her, "I said, you know, I said it does my heart good 
to have been a basketball fan all these years and to have played on, I was fortunate enough to play on some teams at the University of Tennessee that may not have had, like we had some some really, really great players, but we didn't have a Dominic Wilkins. We didn't have a, a, a Charles Barkley. Um, but we had a Reggie Johnson who played uh, pro ball. We had a Howard Wood, Dell Ellis, who was, you know, probably played 12, 15 seasons, ended up in Seattle. I mean, we had some guys that were, were, were damn good, but we were a good team. And I always believed that team ball, the, uh, the new thing with, with the NBA has been this, um, you know, grab two or three guys. It, was, I mean, it started with Miami when they grabbed LeBron and um, Bosch and was it Wade, was they grabbed Wade, right? Was that the, 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 yeah, the big three? Yeah, it was Wade. Mm-hmm. Um, Twain Wade. Uh, well, no, Wade was there. Who was the third guy? Who was the third guy? There were Bosch and who else? Was it just Bosch and, and James that came over? And Wade was there and they just, that's how they marketed it? Dom, anything? Okay. Anyways, since then, they didn't win it the first year. The first year they tried the super team thing, they didn't win it. And then the next year they did. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like when Durant went to Golden State, like they won the championship. And then he, you know, he ended up not winning one again and then leaving. Dom, it wasn't Jason Williams in the three pack. Okay. They didn't, they didn't run a special with Jason Williams. <laughs> so, what was, so uh, is this, is this a, a are they legitimate contenders here? Is this just a sh- is Vegas just shaking us up a little bit? Is this the mouse that no, roared? What, what, what is Miami in this series? I didn't give them a chance to be honest with you. I after the you, first game, if, if oh, I didn't think Miami would turn around after after they shit the bed so bad in the first game. And right. It's like Strauss was like zero for seven from three. Like no, Martin didn't show up. Vincent didn't show up. Nobody showed up, and then they turn around. And Strauss hits like four threes in the first quarter. They shoot four, almost 50. I think they shot 48.9% from three point. So basically they shot 50% from three point. I mean, even if you, if you hit 15 of those, it's, it's, it's 45 points. It's like. Is the spread down to three and a half? Was that, is that yeah. what I said? They're in Miami. I know, but I, Jesus, three and a half. I like Denver. Wow. I think I feel like that's a must play. I've already, I've already put my money on Miami. Did you really? Yeah. Well, I think that I, I think that Malone think is going to make. I think Malone's going to make adjustments, and I think he's going that. He's that Miami's guy is already uh, is already made his adjustment. That just putting Kevin Love in, which I called, I called that early. Like I, I would, I would expect to see Kevin Love, and then when he didn't even see a minute in the first game, I was just like, God, man, I, I, Kevin Love would at least give you a, a body down there. But you know. all right, well, we'll see. That tonight will be, uh, yeah, spoilers be, to our live audience. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. So I, I alluded to it earlier, but um, the Iron Sheik passed today. Conservancy. Yes. I was just thinking about him not too long ago. My first road trip. That's right, the big jabroni. <laughs> that could be a new shirt. A little cartoon Kaz saying, uh, who's the big jabroni driving us? Um, but I, when I think of the Sheik, of course, I think of the fond times I spent in Kaz's company. But it was always immediately followed, Kevin, with how is he still alive? How how has his body not succumbed? He like Keith Richards, Kaz, and like the the, the American cockroach <laughs> would be able to sustain uh, a nuclear holocaust. I figured, but uh, yeah, what was he? Eighty one, I think. <coughs> Eighty one. This is impressive. Does that does that work when I hit that cough button? 
do you have a cough button? Because I it it didn't work for me. I'm I'm deaf in the the left side right now uh, as a result of the cough. Do you have a Do you have a, oh, a, no, a gimmick on, on there? Let me, let, me, let me hit this. What does this do? Does this do anything? No, what you're still that on. Do? Was I on the whole time? Yeah, it, it, about, it made you cock about, about two inches longer. But go ahead. How about here? Am I on? I still hear you. You're still on. Well, I don't have a cough. Button. Well, the on you could always do the on screen mute. That's what I do when I have to hack some phlegm. Yeah, I hit it. the the little on screen mute. Get over it. Um, so yes, so everyone has fond cause stories. He was beloved in the business. I, I, maybe unless you didn't do the arch, and you were, you know, street justice was doled out. But great, everyone has great stories about cars from and and but he, people that, like if I you know we we were just saying how how did he how did he live this long and it's just he was a uh, a silver gold medalist. He was you an know? AAU uh, AAU gold medalist, I think. Um, he was a silver medalist for for Iran. For Iran, he was the Shah of Iran's bodyguard. <clears throat> That's correct. I mean, it's not like this. That, that's it. That's a fucking. That's a badass dude, man. Absolutely, but w- yes, absolutely. And you look at his legitimacy, and then that's you. You know, you fast forward to the middle of the book. You flip some pages, and as he said on our you shoot, which I rewatched uh, today in disbelief in a clip, where he said he would he would do hands headstands handstands when he would snort lines in the hotel for the boys at the party, he put his feet right up, go down on his hands and do the line. He asked them the longest line. He said 11 to 12 inches. Soft. Well, <laughs> he was, he was doing cables, man. But, uh, rails, yeah. brother, rails, brother, Sheiky baby. Uh, great. Maybe, maybe sampled for the chic, you know, Bubba. He, he, yeah, I guess we'd say he said of Wendy Richter at one point that she, uh, she knocked on his door, and uh, I guess he, uh, you know, he said, uh, "You, you, you." I, I tell to Wendy, maybe you know, she do the job for me, and uh, I say, "You drink Shiki's beer, you smoke a uh, Shiki marijuana, you won't do the job for me." I love the the phraseology. Someone asked a couple of weeks ago, wrestling terms. He wanted to yeah. nail Wendy and said she wouldn't do the job. Uh, sorry, I can't do the favor. I can't, I can't put you over, bro. <laughs> can't put you over, Shiki. Fuck, man. Oh, I love him. Everybody do yourself a favor after after you're done listening to us. Just uh, go on YouTube and search for some great Cosro stories. He uh, he was one of a kind. Totally did you ever, did I ever tell you the story with Nord? John they're Nord, up, the barbarian? Uh, yeah. So they're up. They're up in uh, up in Canada, and like Sheik's got like an eight ball in his bag, and Nord is closing his bag because he's got, went by the guy, and as Nord's closing his bag, Sheik takes the eight ball and throws it in Nord's bag, and then they go through Sheik's bag. Sheik's clear, so they get to the building, and Sheik walks up to Nord. He goes to goes, collect. I do yeah, remember this. Oh, yeah. Oh, John, but it's not a baby. Uh, I, I I believe I left my cocaine in your bag. I believe I left. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, it, at the customs, I you were closing your bag. I toss it in your bag. Uh, uh, no, uh, no heat, baby. Nobody get. And fucking Nord wanted to kill him. Who wouldn't? Absolutely. But maybe maybe Shiki gave him the. Maybe a Shiki arched his back and put a couple of lines on it. A little bit. Yeah, he was um He was a fucking he was a nut. He was great. And just the whole the whole dynamic with him when Eric Sims was his manager and they they they, they always fought on camera. They were on Stern when we went up there and uh, you know, going at each other. He smacked him in the face. We played the clip on this show. One night after we shot, and Shiki was in the chair for a long time. Um, our quality kayfabe commentary shoots were, were, were sometimes long and, uh, we're loading the truck and from the parking lot in the hotel, I can see into the drapes were drawn, uh, were open in, in a room 
And Sheik was sitting on the bed, and he had his shirt off, leaning over, and Eric was, was working his back and rubbing, like getting the knots out so that he could lay down. He wasn't a young man at the time. That was love. It was real love between Eric Baba and, and Sheiky Baby. A look inside there relationship like no one would ever see on camera because he was the foil. Eric was the foil and the fall guy for the Iron Sheik. Let me tell you, when I think oh, of I Sheiky... Like, I like old Eric. No you like what? I like Sebs. He, I've always he, said he he's a necessary up, evil. He, he puts up with my shit. <laughs> I remember one time you called me. This is way before this show, before anything. We would just work together sometimes, and my phone's ringing, and it's Kevin Nash. Now, I don't have you booked. Like, we're not doing anything together. I pick up. You're like, hey, <laughs> like, this fucking asshole up by you has got me flying coach out of date, out of Orlando, and on top of it, I'm in a hotel that I can't get room service past 11 o'clock. Can you do something about this? I'm like, are we are we working together? You're like, no, but you're like, when I do stuff for you and you got the green screen, you're in charge. I need this guy <laughs> to be in charge. I was like, all right, man, I'll get on the phone. I'll do what I can for you. That oh, was Eric. I, 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 but... Wow. Wow. I heard that. Unless yeah. you have gas, that was. No, oh, man. That's the shit. Shit is fucking. Shit is on. It's popping out there in Daytona. Oh, uh, my fucking. Listen, my, my wife's sitting over that fucking. My dog's crazy by now at the house. From the thunder, yeah. Yeah. Listen, we, we played a clip a couple of weeks ago of Cos getting very excited uh, with his, before he put the camel clutch on Hulk Hogan. And I don't know if Blue Chew was involved or not, but if you want to get that cheeky baby. If, if I was Blue Chew, I would definitely claim it. Absolutely. At this point, who's going to yeah. dispute it? Just, re, just put the little banner underneath. Get anybody a still of Sheiky. Anybody that's used Blue Chew knows that uh, you, you can... You can, you can you can get the arch. You get the arch. Baby. Give your penis the arch, baby. Blue Chew is the sponsor of our stiff one of the week. And what is Blue Chew? You mean to tell me you don't know what Blue Chew is? You haven't listened to this show. Um, let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days you were always ready to go? Well, now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. So listen up. BlueChew.com. They're a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night. Plan ahead. Be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The best part about it, this is all done online. No visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations. You're going to bluechew.com. You're going to meet with a, um, a licensed medical provider. Okay, You're going to get your script. It's going to show up in the mail in discreet packaging. In just days, it works. Get that confidence you need, guys. And uh, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Go discover your options right now at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners, as we always do. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this stiff one of the week this is the all nwo show you may not know it from the top of the show but we are going to be heavily entrenched in the nwo for this for this show and this will kick it off here because the um the uh, i'm going to credit uh bubba the love sponge and the bubba army for this clip this is an audio clip of hogan talking about russo and um and the booking of the uh of his, uh, I guess this was Bash at the Beach, right? Let's uh, let's check it out. Long oh, story short, I said, you guys got me boxing. I said, now it's time to think about myself. You know, this business is the money, the miles, and number one, yourself. And, you know, all of a sudden, I'm in a bad position here, and I got that creative clause in my contract just in case somebody like Stephanie McMahon's six-year-old daughter gave me a bad finish. You know, I could at least cover myself, you know? Right. So I'm going to exercise that creative clause. I'm going to hit Jarrett with a boot, 
you know, if you're going to hit the ring with Rusev, I'm going to duck the back, pick you up, power bomb you, and I'm going to hit Jarrett with a foot in the boot. One, two, three. F you, you can't do that. F you, you son of a bitch, you can't do this to me. I said, now take it easy, bro. It's not a big deal. I'll do the job. I'll do the job for, uh, for what's his name? Jarrett, but I want to get out of my contract. If not, I'll win the match by DQ like you want. But tell me what you're going to do with me. Lie to me. Outwork me. Lie to me. Hey, I can't lie to you. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Outwork me. <laughs> I said, be, I'll be totally honest with me. I can't, I, can't, I can't think of anything for you. I really have been here, and, I've been, and you've been in the business so long. What do you want me to think of? Well, I said, well, brother, if you're as good as you say you are, we got a guy 55 years old, Vince McMahon, that's tearing the house down and drawing bigger numbers than anybody else in the world. And apparently, you know, you weren't running that company up there because I can see how great you are with how what a creative genius you've been here. Our whole our whole business is in the tubes. So I would really think maybe you can't think of anything. I think you're being honest with me that you can't come up with nothing. I said, well, f- it, brother. So we'll have. Uh... We'll have an opportunity this month. I could tell everyone, all of our friends, uh, click this TV subscribers that this month's Nash and Friends, we're going to sit with Vince Russo, Kevin. We're going to spend an evening with Vince Russo. I just, uh, you, I had you send me the, um, his, your tape that you did, your uh, K-Fabe commentaries. Your- yeah. Piece the breaking with kayfabe with uh, Vince Russo, and I got probably what did you send me? Maybe the last hour. Um, it was yeah, I, I guess it's where we were talking about because where was it? You said it was at one forty something, so I, I I went to one. So maybe I just moved it to there, and so mm-hmm. yeah, I watched. I listened probably to, the, to an hour and ten minutes of it, but um, it's so amazing because. Like, I'm listening to this, and I'm listening to it like a mark. And I know Vince, you know? I mean, like, Vince is a friend of mine. And uh, he's telling me that the first time when he was with the WWF at that point, not WWE, um, and they were... They were fucking, they were, you know, they were hemorrhaging up there. They were getting their asses kicked by the, uh, by Turner. The NWO thing was, uh, was, was, you know, was, was doing a number. And they started, at that point, Russo was the magazine editor, which he he was when I was there. Mm -hmm. And they were having meetings at Vince's house, and it was Cornette, Vince, and Russo and all of a sudden they, they, they Russo was going one way and, and Jim was going a completely opposite way and they I mean they, it just got where they were getting nothing done except arguing and Vince said like I'll just go back and write the magazine you know okay like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fine with it and then the next time that they went to Vince's house Jim wasn't there and Dick they he Vince, uh, Vince McMahon decided he was going to go with Russo. And I didn't realize that, that Jim had lost his job. I mean, I wasn't there, so I wouldn't know. And, and then in the TNA situation, um, Vince was there along with Jim again. And um, Jeff was booking and Dutch Mantel and some other people were, were in the committee, but it was basically Russo, Jim, and Jeff. <clears throat> no, I can't say that because I mean Dutch was, you know, Dutch wasn't working, so he was just as involved. Mm-hmm. And Jeff invites Dixie to a Christmas party, and then from you know upstairs, like uh, Ellie May used to on the Beverly Hillbillies show up in her in her best dress, you know, when somebody come to 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 court her, Jeff and Karen. Walk down the uh, banister and surprise, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm with Kurt's wife, and she's like, so she calls Russo, and she's like, what the, like she, you know, goes off on him, and he says, I, I don't know nothing about it, you know, and I guess because Jim and uh, Dutch were friends 
of Jeff's. They were just guilty by association, and she fired, like she took them all off, off, off this, the, any kind of power. And um, I guess she fired them all. I guess she fucking even fired Jeff, though he owned, you know, a portion of the company. That that I'd have to ask Jeff because, I, like I said, I don't know. But then it was like again, Russo, like by default, you know, took took that over. And Jim lost his job again. <clears throat> so I, I, I mean, I knew that they had, you know, crazy heat and that it, it really had escalated. And it was, you know, because I'd, I'd see clips here and there where, you know, Cornette would just like want, wanted to murder him. And uh, so he, by, um... one, by watching, yeah, by watching that, it was, it was just, I was just like, yeah. Yeah, the, the 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 popular, and you know Jim's fans always kind of cling to the, let's hate Russo for what he's done to the business. Th- that hatred doesn't wouldn't go that as deep. No, as it did. I mean, it, it was Jim's livelihood, um, that that was twice um, um, impeded, and he he puts that on Russo, and what. To what degree Russo had anything to do with it in suggesting it is is conjecture. I have no idea. Yeah, but, but no, nobody is going to make a decision to relieve anybody over your unless you're the the clear favorite of who they should go with. And under the circumstances with with Jeff, I don't think that I don't think it was fair to Jim or Dutch. <clears throat> but um well we can talk to Vince Russo about that and so can yeah you. yeah it'll be interesting I'm, I, I don't want to uh, I'm looking forward to just and we're not going to watch a match we're not going to we're just going to sit down the three, it's, it'll be the three of us on, on this and we'll just sit and we'll have a little uh, little round table and we'll kick it yeah and we want you to be a part of it. We want you to ask your questions too. So go to clickthistv.com. dot com. And, and maybe up. maybe if I can Russo, uh, when we get done, Bubba, maybe you do the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you drink a Shiki's beer, you smoke <laughs> my marijuana, and you don't do the job for Shiki. What the fuck? Um, Surprise! You didn't take take a fucking open hand. The uh, the Iron Sheik was not a member of the NWO at any time, and no. on this NWO a, edition, that's that's actually a, 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 one of those brain uh, teasers. Name three wrestlers that weren't in the NWO: Nikolai Volkov, <laughs> the Iron Sheik, and Lou Albano. That's it. Um, Although the way it was going toward the end, with how many people were being added, I think uh, Kaz and Nikolai could have been. Uh, could have been put in there. This is the NWO version of Florida Man and New York Guy, all right? Because a little bit of trivia, I investigated this. You had no member of the NWO, all 75. Nobody was from New Jersey, so which is clearly why it succeeded. But, um, but you did have New Yorkers on there. So this is the Florida Man or New York Guy edition. Two headlines, actual stories. Former when former NWO members, one a Floridian, one a New Yorker. Okay, uh, first, this NWO member was working for the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority as a part-time fare collector and a tick at a ticket booth in the subway, and he left behind a bag of cocaine in the booth. A sub a subway rider thought it was anthrax, and due to terrorism fears, the building was evacuated. Uh, he was not arrested for this, but I, I believe he was let go and, and put in a rehab program. That's number one. Number two. I mean, I know, I know who the human being is, so that's, this is going to oh, So you great. know who they So Okay, so yeah, you'll say who it is and then what city. The second one, former WCW professional wrestler, was among 27 people arrested in a gambling raid at a commercial poker game charged with uh, commercial gambling and uh, for violation of the Controlled Substance Act, both felonies. All right. He, but he's not from Florida or Jersey. Which one? The second one. 
He's from New York. He's from Brooklyn. That's not Disco. That's Disco. Disco's not from New York. Disco's he's from, from Brooklyn. No, he's not. Fucking Disco's from fucking... He went to high school in Atlanta. He may have moved to Atlanta, but he's from Brooklyn. Uh, uh, bullshit. He, and who was, and he went to he, high I'm school. I'm telling you. And who was the first one? It's the Brutus the Barber. Yes, it is. And he... He a he lived he the Floridian, and um, pull up Glenn G- Gilbertian. His birthplace might be there, but I guarantee you he he grew up in Atlanta. Let's see this year. All he right, went to some fucking high 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 pollutant high school too. All right, there's Disco. Let's see. Not oh, reading his not reading his fucking. WCW bio, are you? Because fucking uh, Travolta, was from no. Brook- Travolta was from Brooklyn. No. During Saturday Night dick. Fever. All right. Born <laughs> November 12th, 1967, Brooklyn, New York. I have it right here. He did go to the University of, of Georgia. He went to high school in, in fucking Georgia. I can't, you see, I can't get his. Uh... Get his younger years here. Let's see. Anything? I've n- I, I've known Glenn for fucking thirty years. I've never heard him tell me one New York story. First thing he said when we were doing his guest book, or we sat down, we had to wait for a little bit, whatever. He said, "Guys, can I get can, can we get like a like a, a Brooklyn style pizza?" So right away he wanted the Brooklyn style pizza. That's how you know he's from up here. You can't live without it. Um, nothing about him coming up here. Um, other than his birthplace, which is Brooklyn, which I think counts. I don't know about that. I'll text him afterwards. I'll get. I'll get. I'll get confirmation where he spent his most formative years. Oh goodness! Well, you goodness know, your formative years are when you start getting ass. So that's definitely. I mean, <laughs> listen. You know, uh, and if when that happened, you need to be manscaped. You need to be groomed, and you need to be ready to rock. I know Glenn's the hair on his head was always perfect in the uh, in the vignettes and in the uh, you know the dance on the way to the ring and the whole deal. But man, oh man, Father's Day is right around the corner. And uh, if oh. you haven't gotten your dad anything yet, uh, don't worry. Uh, that's where the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped, come in. You and I both know he needs some serious grooming, and. Um, I wonder how your dad would take that if he got that for him, right? You know, I was just so funny you said that. I paused because I'm like, my daughter walked up to me with my wife and said, here's a little set for your set. I, I don't know how I would feel about that. I think it did. I, I think it would be cool. I, I would request it from my wife and then have the kids give better, me the card. Yeah, better than um, like a sweater or something. You know? Yeah. I guess, yeah, but I'd want it. I'd want it. I would just, I would just need to handle the. Uh, I need to handle. Well, the, uh, if you're a grown listener, y- your dad, um, you could, you or any of the listeners could certainly <laughs> give their dad this. Listen, you and I, the reason we're talking about this because we know that your dad is going to need some serious grooming in life. All right, so grab your dad the performance package 4.0. He'll thank you for helping him tame his beast. It's a and win-win your mom will situation. Thank you for, for adding Both two for in, mom two and dad. In, two inches of appearance to your father's cack. Go to manscaped.com <laughs> and use the code CLICK for 20% off and free shipping. Guys, this is, whether we're talking the beard game, whether we're talking the ball game, um, Manscaped products are strong and they go hard, okay? they uh, They have perfected. This Can I give everybody game. a little a little hint out there? Yeah, of I, course. I, I, you're I, a user. You're yeah, a user, if, and if you have gonna, the beard you, gimmick gonna, too. Yeah, but if you're going to trim your uh, your just so your groin area, yes, your pubic area, um, start at a, a higher setting. Like don't, because I promise you, it's, it's unforgiving, man. You're gonna, you know. Oh, if you go too, if you go too yeah. deep, man, it's just like. It's not a good look. Yeah, but listen, I mean, you know, we've got the lawnmower 4.0 for him. Imagine surprising your dad with a sleek, well-designed, optimized grooming kit that says 
your balls will thank you right on the box. Imagine that. Their fourth generation trimmer features cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Okay. Uh, you might be asking, how's this lawnmower 4.0 different than the other trimmers? Well, this upgraded trimmer includes a multi function on off switch that can engage a travel lock. This is a great feature if your father or yourself do a lot of traveling. Okay. It's, a, it's, LED it's unbelievable. How many times I've brought my shaver on the road and the, get there and it's dead and you forget. It's like you're not bringing the cord and all that shit. You're just like, I'm going to be gone for two days, so just bring my trimmer. And it's like, nope. Got turned on somehow in my bag. Yeah. So that, that lock is, is, is a lifesaver. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you got the Weed Whacker 2.0 for the nose and and uh, and the ear and hair. Don't forget, you've got the the Crop Mop Ball Wipes. There's a Crop Reviver, the Ball Toner, the Crop Preserver. Guys, 20% off with free shipping, manscaped.com, but it's only if you use that code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. Don't forget that uh, Don't forget that you came from your dad's balls. This year, show your original home some love with Manscaped. Treat dad's balls properly for Father's Day. The first utterance of the term New World Order was at Bash at the Beach in Hogan's promo as he was being pelted with garbage from the fans in Daytona. Um, how intensively laid out is not the match but what the NWO is and what it's to become, is this like the, the chocolate falls in the peanut butter and we go, oh, yeah, we, we, we got some miles here? Or is like the term New World Order given to Terry? You know, when they, they, they uh, in the Hulk movies where they show his blood when it, he starts to turn into the Hulk, and they'll show like for a split second like a microscopic. Uh, as the oh yeah yeah as and he evolves into the Hulk, you know, right? Like this is what's going on by you know biologically right now. Um, I think that the NWO was that. I think that you know that we had like eight or nine weeks, whatever it was, that Scott and I were showing up, and then we made uh, at Bash at the Beach, we made the the match what were the three on three. And then from there, it was like, you know, we had like a, a, a couple of weeks where we teased, you know, who was the third man, which was it was huge, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, you know, anybody but Hulk wouldn't have wouldn't have been as special. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the perfect guy for the perfect. It was really, when you look at, the, I, you know, I've said it a million times, but the fact that Scott and I both ended our uh, contracts with the WWE on the 6th and the 12th of June. Mm -hmm. No, maybe maybe his was the 2nd, I was the 6th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because my son was born, like, right as, like, that, like, when we first jumped over, my son was born, like, right, right away. Okay. So... Do you know? Do you know that this is going to become a brand? There's no way anyone could have seen that. No, I mean a faction, a, a wrestling angle. We didn't even have we didn't have merch. You know, like we they, like we had to get a logo just to have something to put on. T it was, and then you know, like a guy like Neil Pruitt that who had you know, I mean, he gets credit for shit, but he you know, he came up with a lot of. Uh, a lot of the stylistic, uh, like what you saw visually. See, he was the know. director. Wasn't he the director of the Nitro episodes? He was... Steve Pruitt or, or Neil no, Pruitt? No, it was Neil Pruitt. Neil Pruitt. Steve was the... Brother, a, I guess. the um, who was in charge? Of t uh, probably Mitchell. Was Mitchell Keith Mitchell in charge of TV there? I... Okay. I know anyway. he was at TNA. I don't. I can't. I can't remember fucking shit. But um. So how long after? So so the merch comes. 
when obviously when you see this is catching on, somebody says, "Hey, listen, we need to uh, we need to capitalize." This though becomes today. This is a brand. NWO hasn't been uttered in a ring since. 2002. I mean, when did that all wrap up for good? You brought yeah. it to WWE. I mean, and but then... we've came. I mean, we've had you know reunions, and we've come back, and we've you know we've 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 worn the logo. Yeah, in a nostalgia sense, but but as an involved yeah. storyline. No, no. But I'm telling you one thing: if they're going to bring this uh, <clears throat> Latino World Order back, then I, you know, I, there's a couple of malcontents I see on that. Uh, on that WWE roster, Mr. Ziggler, huh? Yeah. Corbin, you like being over there at NXT? Yeah. Huh? Maybe we put on black and white T-shirt and we have a little bit of fun. How about you, there, Big Braun? I know you just got your neck fused, but you know you want a home. I think you look nice in a you know, big burly guy in a NWO shirt. Throw him a T-shirt, right? But I'll put a fucking black, NWO two I'll put, a black, put a black suit on and fucking NW quit, 2. quit after three means. weeks of people going, what? 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 Fuck this. I, was, I, ain't got time. I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> Lean into was, the mic. I was talking to Steve. Me, me and Austin had our, 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 our monthly sit down and powwow. Yeah, and he was telling me a story, you know, because he was he's he, he was he's been uh, you know, runs those uh, side by sides, those quads, and um, yeah, you know, he's like he's got some. I mean, I, I watch his videos and shit, man. He, he gets going out there. He's I know he's uh, I give a shout out to Kawasaki because I know they they sponsor him, but. Um, he did a uh, uh, like a, a race and had a sponsor, and Kawas they they, they they jacked up a, a Kawasaki and made made it uh, race ready for him. Mm -hmm. So they go out and it's a fifty five mile track and they got to do it three times, and where because most of Nevada is is. Uh, public fucking it's just it's it's the state of nevada you know it's like that's who owns the fucking the, the majority of everything and the roads that go through there uh where this trail is are just roads that farmers use and everything else so they have to basically have a person with a radar gun and everything else to slow people down and they put a stop sign there, and you have to come to to a stop before you can go through that road, so that you don't have anybody, you know, slamming into a, 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 a F one fifty or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, to some farmers driving. So, Steve's telling me, he says, you know, when you're driving that fast, and he said, there's fucking dirt and all kind of shit. He says your your, your co drivers. You know, working in the mirrors and everything else. He says, "That's uh, and I, I, I just say there was a rookie that was driving in front of him. I won't, I won't say, I won't give any description. No because, descriptions. No description. I just say there was a rookie, and uh, she. I mean, uh, <laughs> so I, there's they're kicking up all this smoke, and." The next thing you know, Steve slams into the back of this buggy like 50 miles an hour. Holy shit. Because they're 600 yards from the stop sign. And this person just decided they were just going to slam on their brakes. And it was so dusty. You and it was see so that. dusty. But by the time it's, it, but, and Steve, by the time he hit her, was going so fast, he hit her again. It knocked Steve over on his right hand side and it tore the wheel and something else off on the right hand side. They had to flatbed it back. But the guy is trying that that the person that fucked up their driver's trying to say was it was Steve's fault. And they walk back and it's like the pieces of the of the wreck are uh, you know, two football fields from where she was supposed to stop. 
<laughs> and like, and he was just like, wow. Yeah. So the next one he's going to do is going to be at night. And, and then we started talking about like, hey, man, you know, it's, we're beat up like fucking blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking like, yeah, we're beat up and you're in a damn buggy getting slung around with a with a an ex broken neck, you knucklehead. Like, hey, easy buddy. I don't I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of buddies I've had for thirty years. Like, you're one of them. Hey, I need to I need you to hang in there. I need well, this is the premise. Bring... I mean, the whole show is 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 his uh exploits like well, not crashes, yeah. but going throughout the country and but and i don't think that he'll mind me saying this he this was not you know what was what they pitched because it was like he couldn't believe they showed up for episode one and it was snowing like he thought this would be a spring thing it just it, it just and everything they've done they've it's it's like everything it's it's everything and they've they you know there's He's he just told me one story, and uh, I don't think he'll mind me saying this. Um, Steve got up at like six o'clock in the morning. It was I was actually before that because I think the local Krispy Kreme opened up at six. So Steve thought, "Fuck it, man! I'd, I, you know, I'll get up." And he bought like sixty dollars worth of donuts for the crew. You know, and, there, and and Steve drove every mile of this that of that whole show. If you if you watched it, uh, he drives this Winnebago, this big ass trailer. Mm -hmm. And um, he says, you know, like the next thing you know, that they're they're dry, the guy in an S. I think they're in an Escalade, it's some kind of SUV. Are driving up next to Steve, and the the lady producer saying. Unroll the window. He wants to hand you some some donuts. And Steve's like I am when it comes to like you don't fuck around in a car, you know. Put your seatbelt on. For like this is this is adult time. This isn't fuck around time, you know. Especially in a damn Winnebago. And they're so they end up mooning Steve, and you know Steve's sixty or close to, and he's like, here I am. I'm supposed to be the rattlesnake fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I got these fucking jackasses doing the little fucking college prank. He said, and what am I supposed to do? It, 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 am my character supposed to sell that? He says, let alone the fact that if I could, got up on my own, own damn, you know, trying to be nice, and they're wanting to fucking throw donuts all up and down the fucking road that he paid for. This you is know? the crew? This is yeah. the crew? Yeah. And I was just like, but I, I watched the show and I just, I, I picked a couple, like some, some things and he was just like, and then I could tell like, Cab, just shut up. Like, Steve doesn't want to talk about this because he's yeah, already, this is not, this is yeah, not a good time. He's, he's <laughs> already, like, he, I've already, like, Kevin, I've already had this discussion with my wife. <laughs> I don't need to have it with you. No, he was cool, man. We were like, we, but he was, he was very, very unhappy with, uh, and I watch it. I'd like it because there's. I mean, they, you catch some 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 Steve Williams in there. You catch they're like real Steve in there, and mm -hmm. I think that's kind of cool. So anybody that you know, but I think you know, you bring me in some place and tell me I'm going to be fucking doing that uh, cocktails at Liam. The, who, who was in that? It wasn't Liam Neeson? Was it? Was it Liam Neeson? Uh, no, you're thinking of uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah, who's the who's the other guy? Brian Brown? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a he kind of looks like Liam yeah. Neeson, though, right? He's got that vibe. He's got yeah. the uh, love child of Liam Neeson and um and Michael Caine uh, vibe. Yes, yes. And um, so the the person like you know do, does something where he throws it behind his back, spins it, and does all this shit. It's just like instead of like you would if if I was to teach somebody to do do something like that, I teach them to do one thing. Like this is how you spin a cup, you know. We would build on that, but since they're so tight on time, like Steve's got to learn how to do what this guy's perfected in 15 years. Steve needs to fucking get it down pat in seven minutes. Exactly. Like you can just see Steve's like fuck this. So, yeah. Listen, um, as far as uh, 
the NWO goes in, in relation to Steve. Also, never remember, by the way. Just bring that up. Um, would have been a good one. He would have been perfect. I mean, he basically, been- you know, what was going on over there was was a, a kind of the mirrored reflection of of the NWO. And well, I think that I think that the DX was more NWO. I think Steve was such a separate entity. Well, but the, the well, yeah, you know, I mean, because I guess Steve was always popular. Steve Stone Cold was always the babyface. Yeah, NWO I mean, became babyface by default because they got too cool to be heels. I mean, that happens, right? When the heel gets too popular, you can do any, you can have them do anything you want, and they're gonna they're gonna be over. But did you? Know, and, and we also models? we also we also had that New York TV we were coming off of. Yeah, and yeah, Scott, sure. Scott and I, it, it didn't. There was such a different distinction back in those days, like when you would be at WCW and somebody go, man, you ever, you know, you ever think about going to New York? You'd be like, Oh man, I'm not fucking ready for New York. Like I'm fine for here. I'm fine for fucking WCW, but I ain't ready for New York. Hmm. That was always. And when, when they said come in as a bodyguard, I thought, fuck man, like Shawn Michaels is like, he's his, his rocket's been lit. No, the big guys aren't selling for him. They're going to bring me in and help fucking, you know, get these guys selling. And then it was like right off the off the bat, he's working with, you know, he does a small little angle with Marty, and then he's out, he's he's off with with Scott, mm-hmm. and the three of us are driving, and and it's just like, again, perfect. The, 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 that was that was a perfect storm. As was Hogan coming down that ramp was a perfect storm. Correct. You know. Hogan yeah. was off TV shooting a movie. Scott and I just it came over fresh and it looked like it was a takeover. It looked like it was the WWE it had sent a, a force over to, to to shut Turner's fucking boys up and who more WWE than than Hulk would be the would be the, you know, on that A&E documentary that they did about the NWO, Hogan, um, he iterated that he'd like toiled over this decision and turning his back on the red and yellow and all he'd done to build. But at that point, what choice did he have? The red and yellow and the... It's still, though, I mean, it's it's so hard. I, I can't, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I have a perception of what it would be like, but it's like if 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 this logo on me right here, if this logo was as over as it was, and it said Nash World Order, it would be very hard for me to. It's I can't give this up. You know, this is. I mean, this is this is when somebody says your career. This is the first thing I think of. Right. You know. So like the Hulkamania would have been. This was my, this was my 73 home run season. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I I wasn't on the gas. (laughs) I was on growth, I was on growth hormone, but not, not test. They wouldn't give me testosterone because my fucking natural test level was still too high. But boy, I could fucking get, get six IUs of growth in me every day. But I understand what you're saying that that this was something that Terry built over you know years and years, and it was it was the structure that the built that the business was erected on um, in the 80s and 90s. I mean, of course, you know the business existed before, but that I was, crossover. I mean, like I, the, to me, the thing that made pro wrestling appealing for me to 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 do as a uh, an occupation. And to pursue it at all was the fact that I had watched those Saturday Night Live main events and had watched, I mean, because that's, in in Detroit, we got New York TV. We didn't get Dusty and those guys. Mm-hmm. I had no idea who those people were. When did, it, I guess when Cable came up, you got TBS? I did, but I didn't watch it because I was, right, like, right. like I said, I was watching Hoops. So... Mm-hmm. Um, when I moved to uh, Atlanta 
and got the because they said you know if you want to if you want to become a pro wrestler you got to go to Atlanta that's basically what I was told like that would be the easiest route and then once I got down to Atlanta they said well maybe you want to go see Matt Sudo who's the guy who broke in Hulk mm-hmm. and like the first time Hulk walked in in Matt Sudo's dojo Matt Sudo broke Hulk's leg yes you know it's like legendary story and it's you know of course hulk comes back and becomes what he becomes and um i saw a guy today at the gym that went down and went by hogan uh hogan's uh beach hangout mm-hmm. and he said you know he said hey i met hogan and i said oh yeah i said where'd you meet where'd you meet hulk at? i said you go down you down in the clearwater area he said yeah i went to his his, his bar he said he's what a nice guy. He says, it's amazing. He says, he's got great skin. He said, you know, for his, like, for his tan, he's like, like you know, he's like, he's got great skin. He's moisturizing, obviously. It's got to be. Loofing and, and moisturizing. My shins look like, I, you know, like this. I mean, if I, if I don't keep Gold Bond 10 on my shins, looks like I walk on them. It's like fuck. His skin. Let me tell. Let me just take a second here to remind you that um, there is a big game on tonight, and we're not going to do any spoilers. But you want to go and sit and watch that game in person. Game time is going to be the way to do this. Okay, gametime.co. Gametime.co um, is the website that you can go to for last minute ticket purchase. You can actually buy them whenever. You can buy them in advance, or their specialty is that last-minute ticket. I got my Bruce Springsteen tickets. Can morning. I throw in on uh, this? Please do. Fuck, man. Let's see what Ford Field. There was right 500, 555 seats left for Taylor Swift. Let's see what those are going for. All right. Uh, Ford Field this weekend, Steve. Maybe uh, you can do this as I do it. Bring it up. You'll be faster than I. He's all over it right here. Anybody that doesn't have this app is crazy. Yeah, it's great. You can click the the location. It shows you the view from the seat. See, there it is, right? So you can scan all around there, find the location you want to sit at. Nothing in that lower bowl. Zoom in there. So is she, she in the round? It looks she's, like she's in the round, right? She, no, she's got a oh, she's no. got like a, a Rolling Stone stage. She's got a main stage. Right. She's got a ramp with a middle a middle stage there, and then she's got a far a far end stage. So, God, I mean, those those twenty one hundred twenty one ninety nine. What is that? The FLRM. Those seats look decent. Yeah, cheapest that's, seat in the house. I just saw the cheapest there, seat. There, there, eleven. Look at that. The, the the outside row, second back is is eight eighty six seventy seven. At a, a, the one on the bottom. The bottom right I there. Yeah. Like, bam. Yeah, but look, I can click that one right there. I get d- 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 similar seating at, uh, was that 2250? Guys, you're going to go to gametime.co or download the app on your iPhone. That's how I do it. That's how I roll. I got my tickets that way. And listen. Steve, if, what's the, I'll, 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 I'll Google it real quick. I won't I'll let Steve hang with that. Get, get me to the game. Get, how about the? How about next week's? Uh, the next? The next game was that going to be Friday? If I wanted to get tickets for Friday, well, Pearl Jam coming in, oh, United yeah. Center. Pearl Jam. Yeah, see, see that's that. it was at the eleventh, right? Yeah, so, let's see that. Per, where was Pearl? Oh, there's the Miami Heat. Okay, so. Uh, there was Pearl Jam. Okay, so if you want to go see Pearl Jam, look at that. 144, that's right, 142, that's tremendous. Click the map. See, so get me there. Get me to one of those seats. Let me see, what, what what will my view be like? This is great, guys. This is so much fun. I want you guys to have this fun, too. This is game time. It is the place for last-minute ticket deals. It's the fastest-growing tic- ticket app in the country for a reason. You get images of your seat before you buy, so you know what exactly what you're going to expect, your view from the seats. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, you're all set. You go show your phone at the venue. I got right in. Tickets are sent directly to the phone. You never have to dig through your email for anything. So 
Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to snag tickets with the stress-free experience of Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CLICK. You're going to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we thank Game Time for my tickets and for being a sponsor. So do you think if we brought Pearl Jam to uh, the United Center, we could sell I think out. that's an instant sellout. <laughs> the collision? You need your, uh, right. That, that'll, that'll fill the house. They're going to open for collision. They're going to do a 35-minute set, and then uh, TNT's cameras are going to go live. Fucking sweet, man. Eric Bischoff proved to be the perfect person to manage that NWO brand. What, would you yes. have thought so at the time, though, before it got rolling and the proof was in the pudding? Would you thought that Eric would have been able? When he sold the idea that, about you know it, it working in Japan, and so he came, he came to my house and he we he stayed for like a day or two, and uh, the first night we just stuck, we hung around the house. I think my wife cooked, maybe we cooked steaks or something, and then the next night we, we there was a. a a gentleman's club called Bourbon Street Circus. I don't know if it's still in Phoenix, but that used to kind of be where the talent was. And so, you know, Eric and I went out there and had cocktails. And um, he pitched, you know, he pitched the idea to me. And he was very animated and very excited. Like he, you know, I'm listening to him going, yeah, I worked in Japan. You know, like it just—he had way more vision and 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 way more expectations than I did. So you really, so you were a tough sell at first. It wasn't a tough sell. I just thought, like, you know, you're bringing like you're so limited when you're bringing in two guys that were involved in the curtain call. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's like everybody knows that Scott and I are boys. So, and we're coming in together. So, you, you've got to package us. The, there's been ongoing skits back and forth between the two companies, you know, with uh, mean, scheme, mean Scheme and, uh, you know, like Turner doing his and then Vince. Oh, Reed the, the mockery. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the parodies back and forth. I mean, there was definitely tension there. And then all of a sudden, it's just here comes you know, two of the top five guys in the WWE showing up at, at Turner's and one, you know, one week Scott shows up next week, I show up and the rest of it's a fucking adjective. But he, um, so when Eric's pitching this to you, the, uh, your reference to Japan, by the way, is the, uh, the original invasion angle from like 96 or whatever was the, uh, New Japan and that the other federation was it like no because we were ninety six. Uh, you were later though, no? Or maybe it was ninety five then. We're, 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 whenever we're it happened chill. in Japan, when uh, New Japan and that U U W Union of Wrestling, whatever it was called, yeah. they did that interpromotional invasion thing, and so cool concept. I mean, why the hell not, right? I mean, you guys are so closely associated with WWE; it only makes sense. That you try to do that, and and to have that 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 third, I mean, to have that third piece of Hulk, and he did, when we when we pitched the finish, you know, like when we pitched the finish, and then Hulk would come down and drop the leg, blah blah blah. Um, it was like we, we had no idea. If Hulk was going to jump on, but the ratings started going through the roof, and we started beating New York. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we start, started beating WWE, and at that point, it's just like, especially with his, you know, once we uncovered the uh, Ark of the Covenant <laughs> contract he had, <laughs> yeah, it was something. You know, it was like wow, like. You know, to, to to me conceptually at the time, I'm thinking he's a smart dude, man. He's going to jump on this. He's he's man, he's going to jump on this. He's he's got to have a 50 percent merchandise deal. L little did I know, you had no idea. 
He got everybody's merchandise money. You paid to wear the damn shirt. You know um, what? And, there, and one thing that Scott would say, and I and I and I took it from him is, you know what, man? Everybody cuts their own fucking deal. You know, if you fucking if you sign off on something, that's your deal, and that's that's just it. Mm -hmm. Do um, when Hogan would do the doesn't work for me, brother. Right? We always hear about this. You guys all had creative input with Eric on what you guys were doing. Yeah. With NWO. Would you did you kind of function because I know you got on with Hulk well, and obviously you got on with Eric. Were you kind of a middleman between you and or Scott between Hogan and the no, office? No, because by the time be, by the time it didn't work for Hulk, we were there was already friction between us. Like that was some of the the problem was, you know, because Hulk is was always so used to, and I, I'll just use his or his direct quote. You know, his entire career, people like stood underneath the Hogan apple tree and waited for a golden apple to fall and they'd get a six month run with hulk and they'd have the run of their life and they would you know move on and he said and, and, and you two pricks come in and fucking come in with chainsaws and try to cut the fucking tree down and he was it's, it's, i can't say he's he, he wasn't wrong in, in feeling that way but it's just like we had a vision and it, it was we were ten years younger than he was, yeah, if not more. So I mean, it's just he wasn't like he was listening to West Coast rap. Yeah, I mean, we just had we just had a vision that, you know, the the more we could, because the last it it became pop culture ish, but it wasn't pop culture. I I have on my phone. I've got to send it to you, but some guy sent it to me. And it's a letter from um, from the principal to the parents, and and this kid is one of them. But the, like, it's been brought to my attention that your son is a part of this gang at school. This is like a fifth grader. Oh, the NWO. The NWO, and yeah. that, that he's he can no longer wear the you know the colors, <laughs> and it goes on and on and on, and it's like three or four paragraphs that this guy, and I'm just thinking like. And the NWO guys with their NWO shirts are roughing up the other guys at, at, out at the playground at recess. <laughs> and They're a successful just, gang. They're taking yeah, over. Exactly. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I just, I read, I just, when I'm reading this and I'm thinking like, I get what, not, like, I, I get now why sometimes a person will just come up to me and, and like, in, in, like in Des Moines and like, Wow, man. Like, I never thought I'd meet you. Like, you have no idea when I was 14 how much shit, I, like, how much trouble I got in because of you guys. <laughs> and you say, you know, it wasn't our intention, but hope was fun. Hope you had a good run. Did she, I said that did she do Heenan. the when job? I, <laughs> did you do the job for me? Did me? And when I met Bobby Heenan, I said that, I said, listen, I have a lot of teachers that would like to talk to you because I had your friggin' mouth when I was a kid. And he just, he goes, did you ever get thrown out? I said, no. He said, you weren't any good. That was Bobby. Yeah. Um, could the WWE run with NWO after the purchase of, of all the uh, Turner uh, rights and stuff? Could it ever have worked? Or was this just, was this just they doomed wanted to it be to. put to bed? If they wanted it to. It was working. We were the number one selling T-shirt in two weeks. It was working. So why didn't it go beyond two thousand two or whatever? Because it get once once Scott was gone and Hulk went back. It's like what worked was we came back and we were the original three, right? And then once uh, Hulk broke off. Then Pa came right back with us, and we were the Wolf Pack, mm. which was what we were on the road the entire time that we were together, the three of us. Right. Like you saw that that's that's was was if you went to a house show show, you saw the Outsiders and Pac. 
and it was free bird rules. So even if kid worked earlier on the show as the cruiser champ, he'd still come out with us and it would end up being the three of us versus whoever two guys were in the ring. Right. You know, we would just, we would just make it free bird rules. So, um, The merch still going strong today. I, merch sells. They're I making dolls you, all the time. I, they keep I, making. I told you, fucking. We had this conversation. They have screwed us on our merch the last quarter. We but, I didn't get. I didn't get a dollar on NWO. And but I think that was whole, just a. It was a switch in the vendor. I think is what the the it issue better was. It's be. gonna. It it's going to straighten be. out in your next check, I would assume. Well, I would, July first is the next quarterly, and if, it, if it's, it just it's awfully funny how several very large stars that I'm in association with that aren't afraid to discuss such things as just not <laughs> dollars and cents, but hey, have you noticed that the merchandise is basically the royalties has basically been cut in half, and it's not just one person. It's all three of us. Which would lead one to believe that that it was the accounting getting on the books for the new company. I would. That's what. You'll get a double kinda, payment. Well, uh, like a 150%, uh, right? You'll, you'll have uh, the well, we should, half I that should, you lost, and then. I should get, yeah, I mean. They'll make up for the for the period that was should that be, was cut should lower. Be, it should yeah. one, yeah, one. It should be one. It should be one hundred and fifty percent, right, of what I normally get. Exactly. So, but, if it's, but and if it's not, then then I, then I guess uh, who's who's the guy that bought this company? Uh oh oh you mean w- fanatics or 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 no WWE. WWE. fanatics is the merch what's the, now. What's the guy's name that bought WWE? Uh, Endeavor is the is the is the company. Yeah, what's the guy's name? Uh, Ari, right? Yeah, Ari. 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 Yeah, so I guess I'll be having a powwow, of, putting a piece of paper in Ari's hand. Well, but point being, the stuff still sells. The brand was still strong. It yeah, it still sells. It I saw. I saw, I saw a shitload of brand new uh, WWE logoed NWO shirts in Des Moines. As a matter of fact. Mm. You can you can tell when they're new because they look just like the one I got on. Mm-hmm. So, but the, and yeah. then, but there's new dolls. And there's I NWO it, dolls all the time. The Funkos, right? Didn't you have a new Funko? Was that an NWO? I, I Funko got one. Or? No, that's going to be a Big Daddy Cool, is what I heard. Oh, okay. That was one of the. That's one of the things they told me to squell my anger when I called about the ro- last royalty check. <laughs> listen, oh, you're going to get hey, a listen, Big Daddy Cool listen. Funko. And you're on all the games, and you got this, 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 and this. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if I if, if I'm getting seven percent of the Heinz ketchup packages that you sell to the ballparks. I want the fucking royalties on what you're selling to fucking Walgreens and WalMarts and everywhere else in the in the big you know sixteen ounce Heinz uh, Heinz bottle. I want the I want the the, the bucks. I don't want I don't. You give me all the Funkos you want. I don't. I don't get seventeen percent of the Funkos. Just so. spitballing, but uh, you know, you're you're mentioning uh, this this drop off has come it coincides with the purchase of the company or the yeah no I mean co- the coincides the with company into... the uh, with with the setup for sale. And now that it's sold, but the the merger isn't complete yet. Well, maybe maybe you won't get your fifty percent until. Well, as I'm saying, so it's just court. like if it's if it is fanatics, and they've made the fucking uh, the the they've made the the issue, and they didn't have time to. I, I don't know what you would. I mean, it's not like they're not the largest fucking. Uh, company that, that, uh, yeah, that does licensor, this. yeah, right. I'm, geez, I, I'm I'm really counting on that to be the fucking case that they fucked up. 
You know, it's just like, and I guess, I guess people are just fucking dumb. Like, like people say shit to you, and you're just like going, "What?" Like, well, I hope it'll get squared away. Yeah, but who fucking signed off on this? You know, because I'm looking at it, and it took me six seconds to take my royalties out and look, and there wasn't an NWO item on it for me to go, this is fucked up. That's clearly an error then, Kevin, and it will be rectified. Well, how is it an error with several other people that aren't involved in the NWO? It's just a 50% cut across the fucking bow. Hmm. I see what you're saying. You didn't even have a line item on the statement for NWO. Not a line item. Not one NWO. Not that they okay. were this, that sales were down. It's just that there. So were, how could so how could like Steve's or maybe whoever exactly. we're talking about say 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 that's just it's just for the, say the sake of argument. Yeah. Say Steve Austin. So what? He didn't sell a Stone Cold T-shirt. Because mm. everything I got was all. It was nothing where I was, I had a, 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 a hunk of the pie. It was all shit that I was with other people, you know, or, or it, was, it was a Mattel doll where your percentage might be 5% or something like that. But nothing that was, you know, that's your bread and butter. That's, that's 85% of your, you know, sometimes right. 85% of your check is, is 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 around this logo mm -hmm. so and it's real simple i mean I, i'm sure if you you go after them and sue them they'll just you know stop stop selling because i know it if if, if i'm getting 17 percent and they're getting the other that they're they're doing pretty well on this this logo to for for profit and that's before their their creative uh their creative uh, financing that SAG and everybody else has. That uh, yeah, well, there's t there's tons of skews there, so that uh... speaking speaking of of, of uh, SAG, mm -hmm. we just dropped the big strike bomb on them Monday. Yeah, I uh, did. You get your pink? Did you get your pink statement the other day? The uh, did you get your foreign? No. Yeah, my foreign no. thing. Uh, I didn't week. get it. Go to your mailbox. I think I got. I think I got it a while back though. It was it's like nineteen thirty-six. Fucking dwindling, also. It's, Nineteen dollars and thirty-six cents is what my my pink my pink. Uh... That that was the total. But this is yeah. This this is this is a great one though. Um, you know when I was. Uh, like during COVID and all this shit, I had gotten to the point where like when, once you became like 20 years vested and were above 57 or eight years old, like all of a sudden to get plan B, uh, Screen Actors Guild Medical, um, you didn't get psychiatric or, or rehab or any of that shit, but just the medical uh, alone for you and your family, uh, my uh Sweet spot was like thirteen thousand and change, and then when COVID hit, I, I I got a letter from from SAG saying basically that they had mishandled our basically our our, our annuities and everything like they just fucked their money up, so there, there wasn't going to be enough money if we didn't start putting more. And I'm thinking like, okay, this seems like a Ponzi scheme, but um. But then again, what doesn't? I'm sorry, man. We made a, we decided to take the, the entire pension plan and put it in the fucking Bitcoin. Who would have thought we would have lost? But uh, so at Asner, um, so I get I get a letter and it says that basically I've got like 45 days to make thirteen thousand dollars, and we're in the middle of COVID and nothing wow. shooting. So just like I have to go on Cobra, you know, and, and do all this other shit. And so Asner filed a, a lawsuit against them, and they just, it's one of those deals where, how, how is it written? Um, 
they're going to be paying uh, the screen the, the Screen Actors Guild is going to be paying the actors a substantial amount of money. I think it's around fifteen million dollars or whatever it is, and it's going to be split up against all those that got kiboshed during this, and it'll be handled accordingly. But at the same time, in no way is the Screen Actors Guild saying they did anything wrong or not lawful. I said, what the fucking, is, is Screen Actors Guild run by Fox News? We will not admit to wrongdoing. <laughs> but, but here's, here's eight, eight, yeah, 800, million. Yeah, 800 billion dollars. Yeah. That was only 800 yeah. million. Kevin, you know, you mentioned earlier that you, um, you know, your wife was away on a trip and you had to, you were responsible for your meals. Did you dig into a little Hello Fresh while she was away? The no, because the last about? time they sent it to me, they didn't, I didn't get a, uh, a, a oh, the time. date. There was a problem with the, I, with the yeah, I the screwed date up and I would end up being gone and it sat out in the, in the heat all day. Well, you get right back on there and get your next delivery. What is HelloFresh? You're asking yourself, what am I talking about? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Summer's upon us, so to, uh, take advantage. HelloFresh is here to take the work out of eating well. Reach your goals with delicious, calorie-smart and protein-smart lunches, dinner options. Even have new vegan recipes, too. Figuring out what's for dinner is not uh, at the top of anyone's summer activity wish list. And HelloFresh delivers mouth-watering, chef-crafted recipes and fresh ingredients to your door so you can spend your summer doing, well, whatever the hell you want. HelloFresh Market has new snacks, meals, and more to add on to your weekly order, like their fun s'mores bundle for the kids. All right, HelloFresh makes entertaining easy. They have a selection of crowd-pleasing eats like the Bratwurst Bar and Caramelized Onions, Dijonese Sauce, Pineapple Relish, or a snack board if you're entertaining with pretzel bites, spiced bar nuts, hot honey peach jam. I rocked a Chipotle chicken myself earlier in the week over the um, cauliflower uh, mashed potatoes. Listen, guys, here's how you're going to take advantage of this, okay? Uh, you're going to go to HelloFresh.com slash Click16. Use the code Click16, K-L-I-Q. Why the 16? Why the 16? Because you're getting 16 free meals plus free shipping. For Christ's sake, I'm going to repeat that. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Click16, and you get 16 free meals plus free shipping. What have you got to lose? This is ridiculous. Highly encouraged that you go there and do this. You're going to find out why this is America's number one meal kit. Thank you, Hello Fresh. That fucking shit always happens. I'll tape like the fucking cowboy game or devil's game, right? I turn on the TV and make sure it's on a different channel, but it's on fucking ESPN or something. And the the fucking the crawl oh. at the bottom, like like all right, I saved myself three or, hours. Or 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 you get home and you like there's a game like say the Lakers had played earlier, and it's fucking you, you get home and it's like one o'clock. You're like oh fuck the Lakers the Lakers replay is just starting, and you're no, it's eight, in double overtime. You're, you're, you're eight minutes. No, you're eight minutes into in, into watching the first quarter, oh. and on the trailer underneath, it says NBA and it has fucking Lakers scoring. You're like, why would you possibly do that, you dumb fucks? Now I'm not going to watch the game. I like, oh, when, uh, when Tyson lost to Buster Douglas, I had the game. Uh, the the game. The fight set to. I was at a high school dance. And I had the game set to the fight set to tape. I walk in the house at, at like whatever, 12 or 1. I'm going to watch the Tyson. It was always an event when Tyson fought. Oh, fuck yeah. My mother's up. Like I cross her in the kitchen. She doesn't watch, but she's like, oh my God, did you hear Tyson lost? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You even know who he is, first of all. And you give a shit, and you ruin the rest of my night. That's what. That, that's why you have to fucking be current because everything gets spoiled everything There's, gets uh, fucked it's like uh, with these with your hands it's like i couldn't i was like the, the the kid that 
my my wife says like I'm the worst because it's December the seventeenth. I'm like, you want to open your present? <laughs> She's like, why? Why do you do this? I said because I want to see re- I want to see a response when you open this. I want to see if it's if I did if I did you know, it was a good choice. I said I'm fucked if you open this on the twenty fifth and you get the. Eh. I said, I can, I can rebound. I still got right. plenty of plenty of shopping days to. I got six like, days to make this right. Yeah, if you, you don't, don't like you don't that, like that here, give that fucking back to me. Get you a fucking right. Yankees uniform. I'm going to hit AG1 and then questions. Fans in attendance, get your questions ready. Get them to Steve, and uh, he'll bring them up when I press. Yeah, so we waited that long just to do another commercial? Number five today, by the way. <clears throat> Three, two. All right, everybody. Our next partner has a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 about a year ago when I first heard about it on this program. And you know what? It's taken off. I see it everywhere. I see it advertised everywhere. I have people coming up and talking to me about their uh, their use of it. Um, it is phenomenal. I first took it because I was concerned about, well, well, because I'm, because they're advertising with us, but also I thought it was a perfect fit for my diet because I was worried about some diverticulitis issues I was having. And you know what? Who really wants to pound seven vitamins and pill form every day? Here I know I am getting, uh, what I need, my immune system, my daily nutrition, it's convenient, all right? It's one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements like I was taking, all right? Sustainable routines are key, and this is easy. I get up. It's the first thing I have before uh, tea or uh, I've been doing lemon water actually after this every morning. It's my daily micro habit, okay? It makes it easy to absorb my nutrients, um, lead a healthy lifestyle and feel my best no matter what the day holds. One scoop, one minute every day. All right. What am I getting? What am I getting? What are you getting when you do this? You are getting 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to help you start your day right. Comes in that convenient, shakeable bottle. And uh, listen, when you sign up and you order, they're going to hook you up. Not only with a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and uh, five free travel packs with your first purchase. You just have to go to drinkag1.com slash click. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash click. Okay? Take ownership of your health and uh, pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Tastes great, too. I mean, that's huge for me. That is tough to take supplements when they are not good, but this is great. This is the perfect delivery of all those vitamins into my system. Thank you, AG1, one of our long-term sponsors, and I'm always happy to take your product every morning and happy to take questions from Did anybody notice that shot of me kicking Jericho? Yes, right there. So my hair is that. You've never seen my hair that color blonde before. My color, I, I went ahead and dyed. I thought dyed, it was Jimmy Valiant at first. A little I went ahead and dyed my hair that because I knew how, how bright I had to get it for the Punisher. And I had a hair versus hair match. This is in Seattle. And Jericho's going to cut my hair off. So I figured I might as well have it colored. So when I, I then I go in the back and have her cut it down to kind of a, a flat top, which they wanted. But I just had her, you know, tr- trim it up so I could travel home. And uh, I told Jericho, like, when you're cutting my hair, like, don't, sh- like, I, I, this is for a movie. You can't just, you know, so. Yeah. A little trivia for everyone. Hashtag Ask Nash is how you get in touch with my friend Kevin every week. Like Brett Virgil did, he said, does it bother you or do you find it odd that the greatest wrestler to never appear in a Royal Rumble was Scott Hall? Your thoughts? Was it just the timing of it with him? Um, Always in an IC match that night or a main event type match thing? Did you know that? Nope. 
But that makes sense because he held the IC strap, and um, almost, and he, uh, almost at, at one point, I mean, he was either fighting for it or held it for basically yeah. that, that three years, that three years stint. And he was in all those uh, the main event angles. So yeah, that makes sense. Fernum Schnevitz says, "I saw you talking basketball and pantomiming a shot. Are you a lefty? Love yep. your show." I'm a new 11 soft member. Keep shit up. Killing it, boys. I am a lefty. lefty. Yeah. My wife is a lefty, too, and I have to consistently hear about the you know, superior this, superior that. It's a bunch of horse shit. I mean, I, I don't even go into it. I just, I, I, I just, I know. Do you cut, do you use scissors with your left or right hand? I have to use it with my right hand because I didn't have left hand scissors when I was a kid. Correct. Correct. Do you write, um, do you yeah. curve your hand to avoid the uh, smear? Yep. Yep, I do that. Which is, and <clears throat> all through life, you know, you fucking have that binder on a spiral. You oh, the spiral, it's yeah. It's right in your fucking wrist the whole time. Yeah. And like later on in life, they finally, you know, it's really hard on autographs. You've got to, I mean, it's like you've got to almost hold the, it's almost like fucking you're, you're holding the pen like chopsticks. Right. <laughs> the, the pen has got to be out far enough because I've got to turn and, you know, to get the thing. And so. you get Sharpie all over your palm by the end of the deal, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do pretty good. I, I, I really do. I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm so OCD when it comes to something like that. If I get Sharpie on me, it's we shut down until that's off. I mean, I'm not fucking gonna. You got a have, line I, of nine hundred people. You're gonna you're gonna I ask wish, for baby but, wipes. No, you that that um, hand sanitizer's got like when you f smudge somebody's eight by ten. If it's a, if good quality, you can take a, a Kleenex, drop a little bit of that uh, hand sanitizer, and fucking wipe that sharpie right that one of those. Paint pens we would mm. wipe that shit right off. Mm. So it, questions it gets, from the it audience. Sharp you off. What do we got here? Everybody joining us. This could be you too, if you go to clickthistv.com and uh, and join. Um, do you read Punisher? No, it was after my time. I didn't read. That was from uh, Too Hard and Fierce. Who else was with us? Ryan. Uh, you have a unique move set. Cornette said the same thing. Did that all come together piece by piece or over uh, a short time? Well, I mean, the, the Snake Eyes was as many Vegas as finish. And that's why it's called Snake Eyes, because mm -hmm. I invented that move. So one of my five moves I actually came up with. Um, but I don't know. Nobody threw knees that way. Nobody threw knees with the outside of their leg. Everybody threw knees with the inside of their leg. And I thought it looked bogus. It looked like freaking you're trying to rub your cock and balls on them. So I thought there was more of a, a snap. A lot of them probably were. Doing a, there was more of a snap the other way. And it just, you could work it. You could turn them on their side and do their ribs with it. Because I was so much taller than most people, and then those back uh, elbows, those are uh, Jake Roberts used to do those. Yes. So I just I took those from Jake. Um, the squisher I took from Boss Man. You hold the guy with the ropes and take off and jump up on him. I, that was a Boss Man move. But the hair uh, flip. <sighs> That's Robert just Plant? me being. That's just me being fucking. Nah, because Robert Plant's hair was was it wasn't. Robert Plant wishes he had my hair. Looked a little like the the Jericho match. A little Robert Plant. Thing. Yeah, but that's yeah. fucking because it, it's bleached to death. To death, it's destroyed. So. Church Jackson music question: During the Punk feud, at one point you wore a beautiful Misfits shirt. What are your thoughts on the post Danzig Misfits? Uh, do you have any favorite tracks? I've always been a fan of them. They, they, you know, they, they, a lot of people don't don't realize that the Misfits actually worked at WCW. 
Yes. Jerry and a couple of the other guys were, mm-hmm. you know. So. Allegedly well over 400 pounds says, what was your initial reaction when you found out you had to cut your hair in 2003? Was it an office decision? Hollywood, since you were filming Punisher at the time. Your idea, a mix of three. Ironically, you just explained that entire story, didn't you? So I I didn't know that was actually clairvoyant. You knew the question was coming. (laughs) So I'm left-handed. That's right. One of your many gifts. Uh, How about anyone in the audience? Give us some more here. You guys get some preference. You are sitting it out with us. How's everybody out there enjoying the... uh... The microphone. The is, microphone. Am, am yeah. having, What's the review? Am I having good? If I, am I having a good audio day? Some of you here might have been uh, posting complaints about the inconsistency in Kevin's audio. What do you think? Have we solved the problem? We're in the problem-solving business. It seems like all the time. I'll tell you one thing: to not have this thing in my face all day. The, the the black schwanz. Uh, that's that won't be missed. I felt like I was doing fucking fifties radio. Brandon Thanks, says Brandon. you sound good. There you go. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, what was there? There was an ask Nash that uh, slipped away. With your basketball career and love for the game, do you have? Did you have any aspirations to go to the NBA? If you went pro, any teams, coaches, or players you would have loved? To? Well, you went pro in Europe. So this is kind of like, would I like to host Saturday Night Live? <laughs> would you? Would you like? Who the to, hell wouldn't have? Would you like to play? Would you like to play in the NBA? It just happens to be the highest paying sports league. Well, I don't know now. The PGA may be up there with the fucking Saudi money, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, God, so. I mean that was my my dream was to play in the NBA. If I could have if I could have played in one NBA game, I would have I, I would have considered my career a success. At that time, when you would have been drafted, where would you likely have ended up from a roster standpoint? Who needed a big man? Well, I was a, I would have been a four in the NBA. I wouldn't have been a five. I'd have been a power forward. At seven? So, what, what do you say? Six, oh, ten. I guess, right? Yeah, 6'10". Six, 6'10", ten. Six, ten, yeah. Yeah, I'd have been a power forward. But that was during the Lambeer, Hatchet, Mahorn. Like, you know, it was like somebody might have just needed, you know, I was in no way as talented a player as Jeff Rulin was you know, offensively. Jeff Rulin was fucking, he was a stud. Magic was was six nine too. He, I mean, he was a he was a yeah, guard, six, but nine. he yeah. was six nine. Larry was six nine. So yeah, I get yeah. You know, I was I think of you as a center, but you're right. You you that's where you would have been. Uh, Stephen Lee, Kevin, you've always been a huge fan of Tupac. Those Wolfpack promos were a direct influence. When did you get into his music? How did his death impact you? Did you have a chance to meet him? Never had a chance to meet him. Um... I think like anybody else, I think that um, everybody was watching what, what what Dre was doing and what Death Row was doing. And, um, I mean, Snoop came in and Pac came in. And to me, that which was, was the thing that made, um, that made Tupac who I I consider the the greatest is that he was the first person to put melodies in. Like he didn't just rhyme. I mean, he was you know, he had like a, there was an R and B like a, there was a rap groove and there was an R and B groove that it, right his, his more melodic. The same t- yeah, yeah, and it just and the thing was you know he was a he was he wasn't hard man. I mean he he grew up you know his 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 his. his story his mom was a black panther and you know he was born in jail and you know it just but i mean he went to to high school with with jada pinkett and they, you know he was in he was in the arts and he mm-hmm. was yeah you know, he was he was a poet 
was a, a, a very good, uh, a very good actor, especially for his young and, and the few parts that he had. But he, I mean, have you ever seen the movie Poetic Justice? Mm-hmm. Janet a, Jackson. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice film. Uh, well, Kevin, two hours and forty nine minutes. It's close to a Broadway as we're gonna go. I hope I didn't come across as as much of a prick tonight. I don't know. I think you were a little. I think you were the sensitive Kevin there. Click this is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Eat, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, Sean Oliver, Minister of Prick Evaluation, Dave Winfrey, producer Steve Kaufman, <laughs> graphics by Dom D'Angelo, title sequence by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research Tristan Nash, copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media, Kev. You big prick, you want to do another one? Thanks, team. Um, yeah, it probably, it, this is, if, if nothing else, when it, that, that, uh, that thing above me that says for tea, that, that brings me down here a lot, of, a lot of weeks because no matter how I, you know, this, this, this always has a, there's a, a vibe down here that I only get when I'm here and only when I'm doing this because my boy said across from me. You know what, this summer I want to do, I have to talk to Steve and the crew how we set this up. I want to do one when I'm down in Florida in, in person with you there. And I, I never sat in there with you and Tristan. I want to, uh, I want to feel the vibe. Can we do that? We do, uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll do one in person? All right. All right, y'all. Right, couldn't, couldn't you just do it with fucking, just, you, oh, I, would, would there be a, there's no different in the verb and reverb or anything. Well, it's too well because it's two separate feeds. Uh, would there be feedback with with me talking and humor? I don't fucking know. But is there separate? Is it's, it, I mean, I don't. I don't see how it would be much different than this table. I could actually work off one end, and you could work off the other. There, would there that probably? I mean, there's T was used to sit right there, and I mean, you could hear him laugh sometimes, but mm -hmm. he, you know. But with two feeds, like I'd have a camera on me, you'd have a camera, so that would be like cutting back and forth. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. We can, all we have to I do have is put put a put something and be put something. Well, you, yeah, because you would be facing the mirrors. Like there's mirrors. There's a, this wall's got mirrors on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we'll so. see. We'll see. It'll be a fun project. All right, everybody, we'll catch you next week. Don't forget, clickthistv.com. Join us with Vince. Oh, do the arch, baby. Do the arch. <laughs>